Friends, welcome to Hobby Titans for another very special hobby stream. I'm Brett, and I'm joined today by my very good friend and colleague, Zach Pfeiffer. How's it going, Zach? Pretty good. It's actually, you guys are probably wondering what's going on, it's actually the same two people it is most weeks. Yes. We have just switched seats. Yes, yeah, I'm now the man on your right. Yeah, you're now the man <laughs> on my right, which means I didn't like prepare anything for that. The intro was all you, and... Um, I, it was it was weird. It felt weird. It being felt weird. It. Yeah. It felt weird. Uh, oh. Well, we, we did that. We did that thing. That, right. that, we're we're now, past that. We don't we got have to feel it. weird yeah. anymore. Uh, we are painting Black Templars today uh, brown. Uh, it's a little bit different than some of the the other sort of Black Templar recipes that are floating around the internet right. uh, that you might have seen. Um, we're really excited to share with you this concept. Um, hopefully, you like it too. If not, that's fine. Uh, but Zach, you ready? I am ready. Let's get creative. Let's get creative. All right, what you're seeing here is the test model we did for, for this paint scheme. Uh, it is um, painted, painted, you know, we start with black, uh, but then, uh, so what we have here is, is sort of a more common incarnation of this where they use uh, you use blue edge highlights to make the model uh, sort of have a bit of a blue tint to it. Wait, no, Brett, this is the brown one, too. No, it's not. It isn't? No, no this is the blue one. Wait, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. This is one of Brian's models. Oh, it is? Yeah. That's fine. We want to compare them. Yeah, yeah, so, okay. So this guy is, um, and, and this, is, this is also the Games Workshop studio scheme. So um, if you see... A model on the box, the Black Templar box. They they use this style as well, where they they start with either a black or really dark blue, and then edge highlight with with blues up to whites, and it's it's a it's a cool look, um, but we wanted to try something a little different. And so what you see here on the glam cam is that model we saw in those 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 shots on the left right here, and then on the right, uh, what we're going to be doing today, which is a, a slightly different take on it. So. Um, yeah, can I ask, um, well, first of all, yeah. I totally took video of the wrong no, Black it's, Templar. It's fine. Um, but I have a question. Why did you want to pull away from the blue look, Brett? Yeah, so I, we, I actually, uh, it, it, fans of the show will have seen me paint a blade guard in that, that, with that blue tint uh, right. a few months ago. And I actually painted three squads now with, in that look because I, I really liked it when I first saw it. Um, and over time, I, it, it, it started rubbing me the wrong way. I, I wasn't quite sure, couldn't quite put my finger on why I, I, wasn't, I, did, I wasn't loving it anymore. Yeah. Um, but I just kind of like lost motivation for painting these guys. And when the book came out, I was like, I have to like rekindle this. I need to get these guys done. I'm so excited to play them. But I just couldn't get past you know, something that was bothering me with this, with this blue paint scheme. And what I realized is that the blues are a real cool, they, they give it a cool overtone, but the reds and the bone uh, uh, sh on the shoulders, the sort of uh, sepia uh, shading that's done on the shoulders, as well as the, the red weapons, uh, are, are warm, to warm tones. Right. And so the cool armor was sort of clashing in my, in my head with the warm accent colors. And so what I was, I was trying to think of like, well, is there a different color we could tint the black that would uh, have a warm feel to it? Yeah. And w the, the reds and the sepia uh, uh, washes would, would sort of um, fit better with the warm tones of this yeah. tinting color. And so after talking with you the other day, we kind of settled on, well, what about, what about brown? Uh, yeah, we we almost had like a we almost had like a like a co-therapy session with each other as the therapist and the patient. <laughs> where we're kind of talking about the model, and you were saying how you didn't really like the blue, yeah. it, and you know it kind of gives like this red, white, and blue, and honestly a little bit of yellow all crammed together. Yeah. It's and a lot. It's a lot, and it it's not it's a it's a lot on a model that's really supposed to be black. Yeah, right. I think that's where I struggled. Is I was like, wow, there's so much color on this model. These models are supposed to read as black, right? And maybe the color gives it a little bit of visual interest, uh, but really, like these are supposed to be black Templars. The guy in the front here, the one we're going to do today, I do prefer, and I do think that he just looks more there. He looks more uh, 
ah, I don't know what the word to say is. He looks more like, I don't know what word. I want to say there or like present or like, <laughs> or like unified in his look. He looks uh, historical, a little bit grimier, yeah. Yeah. a little bit more I um, I grimdark. I get this like desert warrior vibe almost. Anyway, yeah, yeah, I, I I like it a lot. I'm not. It's not to say I don't like the blue uh, the blue take on it as well. I think if it's done well, and this one is done really well, yeah, I think I think it can look really good. Um, I just wanted to try something a little different, and for whatever reason, I feel a lot more uh, passionate about this color scheme. And I think that's what you need to get through two thousand points or something. Is yeah, you, you I think really, so. You got to really love it. And you know what I like about this? As I'm looking at these two here, uh, I don't know if. Uh, fans are, are noticing this, viewers are noticing this, but the basing also kind of complements what's up, right? Yeah, exactly. So, like, this guy on the left has, like, this nice, a little bit more vibrant look, which is normally my thing. Pe people will, uh, people who watch the sh our stream know I normally prefer that. But I really do like this black Templar. I love the way you've done the brown base and the, and the uh, dead grass. Yep. And honestly, I feel like the base on the blue tinted guy is appropriate for yeah. for a blue tinted guy. He's got like you know lots of blues and whites in that in that rock and that granite base. So it's it's a good model. I like I like them both. Yeah. Um, I just feel like more passionate and excited about the the brown tint. So yeah. I'm actually gonna repaint the three squads that I've already done. Yeah, we're gonna <laughs> talk. This, we're gonna talk case. a little bit about that today. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, so where are we right now? So Zach and I each have a model in front of us. Uh, we're each gonna paint one over the course of uh, the next couple hours. And um, there's a couple airbrush steps that Zach's already done to mine. That so I'm gonna get right into brushwork. He's gonna go through the airbrushing steps uh, on his model. Um, but yeah, the airbrush steps are essentially a really light application of charred brown. The um, uh, these Reaper Reaper charred brown yep. is is a, a very dark brown. You probably can't even tell that this guy has any brown on him, but um, it's a light airbrush application of charred brown on the entire model, and that's just to like. <laughs> I almost feel like you could do this with a wash, except you know like a sepia wash, except for the fact that what we want is the charred brown to sort of. Uh, hit on the highlights spots, not fall into recesses. So uh, we're just air, airbrushing a, a light application of the charred brown essentially on the entire model. Um, and then he's also given me a bit of a head start on the shoulder pads yeah. with some selective application of uh, Terminata Stone, which is the, the linen off-white color that we're using for the shoulder pads. Uh, so I'm going to Get my first step then is going to be to take this, um, these shoulder pads, go over it with some brushwork, and fill in a little bit where the airbrush didn't. Now, are you going to be using Terminal Stone as well? I am, yeah. Okay, so let me Just load up. Just give me some on the, on the wet pad. Oh, okay. I, well, here, I'll tell you what, I'm going to not use too much. I'm going to put a little bit in the Sotar. And what we actually found out <clears throat> is that the nice thing is you, you don't really have to mask here um, because, well, one, first, I. Fair, I'm using a Sotar, um, so it, it's a little tinier of and an That's area. relevant because it's got a 0.25 millimeter needle, right, 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 little right. tiny needle. Right, so um, there's that. But also, um, if we get a little overspray, that's fine. We're going to clean that up because that we're going to do the brown next. And then I, we found right before the stream that we actually liked the look then if we did, we went back with a little bit of black afterwards um, because the black can help tone the brown down. This is one of those situations where we're not really trying to make this Black Templar look brown, right? Right, exactly. And actually, we've, we experimented when we were doing this test model with a couple different ways of trying to achieve this look. We started with just sort of a full-on, like, hey, this is a really dark brown paint. Maybe we can just base coat the whole model on this dark brown. And it actually looked too brown. Uh, we, we decided we almost b abandoned the idea, actually. So you're like, wow, this is like, this is a brown Templar. <laughs> this guy's not, not a black Templar. And they were like, well, what if we try again? What if we start over, reprime it, and, and basically use the same color paint, but, but just do a real light application or just hit the highlights or, or some combination of the two? Yeah. And that <clears throat> seemed to be the magic bit. So, yeah, I'll, I'll show that when I do it, guys, because... Um, Brett's right. We honestly, I did do a very little bit the first time, but it was still too much. It was and still it, too much. It made him look brown. So yeah. it almost wasn't. 
it almost isn't that you cover the whole model, like we were saying, slightly in brown. You almost do want to think about, I'm going to hit a few areas. Yeah. And I'm going to let the kind of overspray that happens happen. Yeah. Um, because then you, you still end up with these pockets of true black, yep. which I think helps kind of the eyes move around a little bit. Yeah, but, and it doesn't read as, as brown. Uh, right. It reads as black, except for you have this, like, insinuation of brown. <laughs> insinuation of brown is, is, is a really good term. Um, so what you guys can see Brett is doing right here is just going over a couple layers with um, the same color I airbrush. I think that this um, this is a good technique. Like one of the things people talk about is like, oh, painting white and painting these tan and linen colors over top of bone, tan, linen, any of these colors is... It's kind of painful. It can be challenging, but it is made remarkably easier with an airbrush. And that either means you only airbrush or like, like Brett's doing here, he wants to bring it up just a little bit more. Um, and so he's doing that by using the brushwork over top of it, and he's using the same paint, yeah, just so with a brush, and I, I, it it makes it easier, right? The it does. The you coverage. basically yeah. did. You know, this would have been a five or six coat job if I was doing it with only a brush. Yeah. And by by giving me a head start with the airbrush, this is going to be maybe a three coat job or a two coat job. Now it's really a good thing that uh, you can see. This is a view of Brett we don't see very often. This shoulder. And Brett, I really am glad we got your Spring Break 2002 uh, calligraphy tattoo removed from behind your right ear. Oh my gosh. Can you oh, imagine? Yeah. yeah, so I'm, many times. I'm showing everyone my, my right ear, is that what you're saying? Well, just behind. Remember you used to have that tattoo yeah. that says Spring Break 2002, uh, uh, Corpus Christi. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I had the memory of it wiped at the same time I had the, <laughs> the tattoo itself eliminated. <laughs> well... <laughs> Speaking of, of, of bad memories, um, we wanted to um, pose a question to uh, each other and ourselves, but also to you guys. We used to do this a little bit more in the summer, and we want to kind of bring back asking some questions and yeah. some top fives and just some, just, some fun, just some fun stuff to gab about while we're supposed to be painting models. <laughs> and one of the things we kind of uh, wanted to talk about is what is... Uh, the hardest part about starting a new army, and so oh. both Brett and I were doing that. Yeah, kind of, kind of worked up an answer as far as. Um, well, we're both starting new armies. Right? We are both starting new armies. In some ways, you're starting two new armies. That's right. Um, AOS and and 40k. Right. So, um, Brett, we're going to come back to the screen when we talk about mine, but let's let's talk about yours. Yeah. So uh, my hardest. The hardest thing for me starting a new army is picking a paint scheme. So the the, the bit at the, at the start of the show was foreshadowing. <laughs> uh, because, yeah, this is not the first time I've gotten two or three units deep into an army and then realized, wow, I'm, I'm not into this paint, paint yeah. scheme. Um, and I, it, I paint very slowly. I don't know if you guys picked up on this, but, like, there have been multiple live streams where Zach's, like, done with the entire five model unit and I'm still like making my way through just wrapping up the first guy you know like I'm I'm not a quick painter and so to like I have a lot of buyers there's a lot of potential for buyers remorse or painters remorse I guess where I, I get I get uh, you know 100 150 hours into working on an, on a, a new army and then I'm like oh shoot this is wrong. <laughs> and you don't want to, like, it's a terrible situation to be in. So I end up with, in this some kind of analysis paralysis where, like, I can't make a decision because I'm afraid of making the wrong decision. And so I, I struggle a lot with that. And I feel like I would, if I knew from the get-go that, like, hey, this, I'm going to love this when I'm done, mm -hmm. I, would, I would be a lot more likely to, like, just start new, st new projects and start it. But I, I'm terrified that I'm not going to like it, and so yeah. I just don't start it. Um, that's mine. That's that's interesting. I don't know how do you feel about that, Zach. Do you, I feel like you don't struggle with this problem at all. Like when you started your Siam Han, you were like, you woke up one day and you had a paint scheme fully fledged in your head. Well, no, I don't. I don't know that that's exactly correct. <laughs> it's it's more of a paint scheme that I have been thinking about for some time. Um, gotcha. And uh, I've also kind of been thinking. 
you know, I'd been thinking that I, I'd yeah. like to start a new army. I'd like to have something other than just Tau. Right. Um, Eldar, Craft World Eldar had been interesting to me. I, li I tend to like good guys. Yep. Um, and so I was like, cool, I'm, you know, this all kind of came together. You're right, though. Um, that is not something that, I'm, that I particularly uh, worry about. I, I usually... Um, I usually have a color scheme pr pretty pretty okay. I can usually do that okay. You you know what you like. You feel strongly about it, and like I don't I don't feel like you change your mind too often. You're not like you don't like wiffle waffle about it. It's like oh, no yeah. no. Like I don't see Zach. I don't see you being like, you know, I'm sort of on the fence about this paint. You're just like I love this or I hate it. Yeah, pretty much. Um, like that's how, I'm I'm usually able to feel that way. Pretty about aggressively movies, about, about most about music about, about most things um, <laughs> paint schemes. Brad, I'm going to pass this guy to. I'm going to show peep, peeps where he's at because he's now yeah. been given given charred brown, and we're going to do a shoulder zoom. Also, we're going to get Brett's um, take here. Now, one of the things that I, I think I, we kind of just perfected about this process is really now we're going to hit hit him with black as needed. So we're going to have to clean up some of the overspray yeah. around where the shoulder pads were. Yep. And then that's one thing, but the the black going back in now with the black is nice because um, we can clean up everything, right? We can clean up if it got a little too brown at yeah, this point. Yeah, if there's a little too much brown on here, that can be fixed with a, a reapplication of black. Yeah, this is good, Zach. I like this. Okay, this is, so maybe not great. too much black. Uh, I mean, no, I, I don't think it's. I think it's. I think this one's more brown than the first one you did, um, but not too not too brown. Okay. Uh, I can well and after we do a little bit of black. I don't all. know if you guys can see this on the camera. The fact that this Zach just painted this guy brown. Uh, it's really hard to tell. I would not be surprised if you can't see it. You know, I but went over. I went over real quick um, when we were starting <laughs> and, and and checked on because as you guys have heard, Brett and I mentioned before, our TV is like a weird. Yeah, our monitor is like it's really a little weird. It's got dark weird colors. Yeah. It doesn't. If we have like something dark, it doesn't help us see subtleties right. in it. Like when we were doing the redwood trees um, forever ago, we were we were kind of uh, struggling to see that we had put any paint on them yeah. at some points, right? <laughs> no. um, so I did run over and look, and and I you could see the brown. And chat, you guys can let us know if you could if you could kind of notice the brown there or not. Um, so what I'm going to do now is go back and add a little bit more black. I'm going to use a bat in black. Um, Brett has one here that was not an air. And I somehow was able to get it to go through a SOTAR oh, without yeah. thinning it at all. Um, a non-airbrush black. It, but it was such a quick amount of time. Right. You know, it was only about 30 seconds of, of spinning a little bit of paint out. Um, I don't even know if there's any paint in this. Yeah, and then uh, the, uh, black. for these shoulder pads, I don't know if you guys noticed, I've been um, uh, <clears throat> watering the paint down very heavily. And this is to try to get a smooth... A smooth application and it means it takes a little while for it to dry and it kind of puddles in the corners and stuff um, and so what you do is you you just do other stuff while you're waiting for it to dry so like these shoulder pads are not quite dry but I've got other Terminata stone bits that I need to do like these wings on his chest I don't know this isn't an Aquila right I don't know I don't know anything about these. This is not an Aquila. What's this thing called on uh, Space Marine's chest? It's like a skull in the center with two wings on the side that are feathers, but somehow the skull is the skull is dead, but the feathers are feathery. Doesn't make a lot of sense, but. Um, well, thank you, Brick in the Head. He says, we're doing top fives. What's your top five favorite fluids? Um, oh, wow. I, this is a weird question. Like, um, <laughs> Transmission fluid and yeah, I don't know. I guess anything that radiator is fluid. anything that is fluid in nature. I'm gonna say water is my favorite. I think so too. Um, yeah. Then I guess I like coffee. Does that count? Yeah, I think so. I think I'm gonna name mostly food-based ones. Yeah, I was like, I like my blood. Uh, oh, my, you, are, your own blood? Be, yeah, I guess not to like eat, but like just you just because it's good. It's You've good. Got it. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, you uh, need I that. feel like I feel like that's not the na the spirit of the question he's asking. Oh, I don't know. I think he's asking about about foods. Oh, I um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, I guess I don't know either. <laughs> uh, I also like coffee. Um, um I, I I maybe wine. I don't know. Like, do I have to be specific? Do I have to say like? Oh yeah, alcoholic central fluids? central coast like a central coast uh, blend or. Mm. Like, a, do I have to? How how specific are we doing here? Sure. Um, uh, I mean, if Adrian were here, there'd be certain paint colors 
probably included in the list. But. I don't think a, any paint is one of my top five favorite fluids. Honestly, I, I think it would probably mostly all be foods and drinks. Yeah, I think so. And maybe, you know, my own blood is not a bad one either, I will say. Um, yeah, if you, don't, if, you, if, if you run out of that, you're going to be in a bad spot. Yeah, I mean, thanks, Brick in the Head. It's a great question. I'm not sure I... I've never been asked that before. I've never been asked it. I'd have to think about it. I, I am confident that water is probably number one. You know, it's nice. It's, it, it pretty much it, it makes all of the other top four favorite fluids possible. Yeah, and they probably contain water to some extent. Exactly. I mean, most fluids are, are just a variation on water. So, um, great question. Do you want to ask, like, <laughs> do, do you want to just, uh, exp like, do you have a favorite alcoholic fluid? My favorite alcoholic fluid? That's a great question. Um, ooh, it changes so much. Right now, like, Mezcal. Really into Mezcals right now. Okay. Um, but I don't know. What's your favorite alcoholic I, fluid? This is not for kids. Not made for kids. Not made YouTube. for kids. Yeah. I think um, I'm more of a beer guy than like a wine or cocktails. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, in California, there's a lot of IPAs. And yep. so it's pretty easy to get burnt out on IPAs. Uh, so I find that I crave the like beer variety that is is not prevalent wherever I'm living at I the see. time. So when sure, I lived in the because, Midwest, because I was like... Because that's kind of what you're talking about, like being the, burned out. Yeah. yeah. When I lived in the Midwest, I was really into IPAs because, like, it wasn't a big deal there. But, like, when I, after I moved out here, I was like, oh, man, I really want, like, a Scotch Ale or so, like, yeah. something malty, you know? Yeah. So I think that's, like, Scotch Ales or, or, or uh, like, Belgians right now are... Things I'm really into. I, I was talking to our to our friend John from Tabletop Titans the other day. Uh, we we were hanging out playing some board games and having a couple beers. And I was telling him how um, he's from the area. We're not. And yeah. I was saying, I you know, to you is beer just IPAs? And he was kind of saying, yeah, pretty much. And I was saying, I actually am starting to feel like that too now. Like yeah. where that is just what you. That's just what you have, right? Like that is what beer is as an IPA. Yeah. Um, I, the, my my biggest beef with IPAs is you can't you can't drink them like you can't drink anything else after you have an IPA because they just kill your taste buds. <laughs> like after a salad. Have, IPA goes great with a salad. After you have an IPA, like any other beverage you drink after yeah, yeah. that just tastes like IPA aftertaste. <laughs> okay, so let me pass this guy back to you, Brad. One more shoulder view. He's been touched up with black a little bit. Breaking the head says uh, that his. His question was a five dollar. Uh, we're just gonna say S word post, I guess. Oh, yeah. like we don't really, because it's not made for kids, but it could be made for kids, right? Um, we will answer these questions um, oh, yeah. as long as they, you know. And and your question had a had had. This looks a, great. Wait, did you did you collect weird. the overspray here? Did I miss some? Let's see. Uh, there's a, a little bit on the back. Oh, that's your head. There's a little. I think there's a little bit in there. Okay, I can get it. Um, Oh, and maybe maybe something uh, around the backpack. Around the backpack, okay. Yeah, so that was my. Uh, oh yeah, I see it. Okay. That was my cha top biggest challenge to starting a new army. Yeah. Um, what about you, Zach? Well, so what I have down here is a little is a little confusing. It says. Yeah, this that, is a long way of saying what. Um, <laughs> I don't know actually. Did did we come up with what it was? Logistics. Logistics. So for me. Um, when I when I start a new army, one of the big things I kind of struggle with is like, um, I I almost think of it as like gearing up for production for what that thing is now. Yeah. Um, I have many hobby spaces now. I'm fortunate enough to be able to hobby here at the studio. Um, I I have a, a dedicated hobby space at home that I actually barely even use. I, I more likely go out into our kitchen. Um, depends what I'm doing. I don't airbrush yeah, in the out, kitchen. Hang out with your wife. Yeah, our kitchen and living room will kind of kind of connect it. So, um, and and uh, we have a, just a nicer TV out there and etc. So, I have plenty of in some ways physical spaces to hobby. Right. And in some ways, this actually makes the problem worse because right. uh, then I have to move things around. So I think it's spread out, and you're like, oh, where did I leave this thing? I wanted to work on this thing, but now it's like exactly it could be in one of four different spots. And I and I even have a system. Um, some sometimes you guys will notice these kind of white tubs around. Yeah. Um, there's one behind me right there. Uh, oh, what this way? There we go. Right there. 
And yeah, there's also one over here. And these are probably either uh, armies of mine that are in progress, yep. units or units in progress, along with their paints. Um, yeah, you know, so like a lot of people will have a paint rack, or they've got like all their paints on a paint rack. I have, I have, I have a paint rack. Yeah. And I put all my paints on a paint rack. We have one in here in the studio on the wall. And all our paints just live in a paint rack. And when we need a color, we go to the wall and we get the paint off the wall. Yeah. Like, you don't operate that way. You just like, when you build an army, you buy the like six paints you need for that army or the eight paints, ten yeah. paints or whatever. And like those paint bottles live in the tubs, yeah. in the storage tubs with the models at, that are as they're being built. Or a terrain project. I'll, or a terrain project. Or a terrain project, project yeah. I'll kind of just make its own tub. Um, and then, yeah, if I had to buy another color, I, I just buy, I don't like move a black, like Corvus black is right. in both my Tau and a Suryani That's army. That's right. I don't move it back and forth. I just buy one for each. You've got two, yeah. Right. Um, so, yeah, in some ways that It's all a self-contained project. You've got the models yeah. in, a, in a container. You've got the models, the paints, all the tools you need to, for whatever stage of the project you're in. Here's the deal. That sounds like I know what I'm doing. Yeah. And in some ways I do have a system in place. Yep. But also I will just add that for me, I think it kind of makes it... Um, it, it makes it stressful to set up and organize and say, okay, let me now assemble these things. Um, anytime I have to assemble, I'm kind of like breaking a different area down and yeah. I'm kind of, so like just setting up like a workflow, honestly. Um, yep. And then learning the workflow, like even right here, we learned workflow right before the show and right, literally right at the start of the show, which was like, I actually like black at the end again, yeah. right? I actually kind of like doing it backwards. Yeah, we had to figure that out. Yeah, so um, kind of just going through and learning that workflow. Um, I always feel like the first unit or two I do, yeah. <clears throat> a few models might not make it into the actual army. So I usually do a couple of test models. Do you throw those out or do you repaint them? Um, excuse me, usually I, I will fix them. I, I don't throw them out, yeah. Brett, I'm done with this airbrushing, so what, what's my next step? So I've gone ahead and uh, touched up the the white shoulder pads okay. and painted the, the emblem on his chest and a purity seal. So basically I'm doing the color. Oh, do you want to show? I have you yeah, in, sure. the, in the zoom there, yeah. Uh, so these, these shoulder pads, I'm going to call these done. <coughs> um, it's a nice, smooth. It took me three coats with the watered down um, Terminata stone. And it's not perfect. There's still, you can see a little bit of the primer showing through in a couple areas on the shoulder pad, but we're going to heavily... weathering, right? Kind we're going to heavily weather these, yeah, and so it'll, it'll be fine. It doesn't need to be perfectly white. Well, I have a question. Um, Would you want to do that on this one while I, like, start on the gun, or what should I start oh yeah, on sure. next? Um, um, we can do that. We can trade. This way we do that thing we talked about where, like, I, I don't know. I don't think I'm ever going to get the shoulder pad... Um, the shoulder pad where you have the shoulder pad, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so pass him to me when you're when you're Why ready. Why don't I give you this I'll... guy? His shoulders are still wet. Got so it. So just uh, just be careful with that. Um, and then I'll start on this guy. Yeah. Thank you, Mike H five. Good evening, Brett. Why Black Templars? And are you building into a vow? Favorite unit? Alcohol wise, I've been drinking wheat beers lately. Ooh, yeah, wheat beers are great. Uh, especially in the summertime. Um, <coughs> Mike, thank you. Uh, that's a great question. Why Black Templars? So uh, when I first got into Warhammer 40K, it was in 2003. Let me tell you a story to answer your question. <laughs> um, and I just moved to Ann Arbor, Michigan to go to grad school, and I brought my Warhammer Fantasy Battles wood elves with me to uh, the college town and I went to the local game shop and was like, hey guys, I want to hang out and play some more hams. And, uh, and I met the local like gaming group and they're like, yeah, like welcome to our Warhammer Fantasy Battle Club. We're all in the process of buying and painting and assembling and building 40k armies right now. <laughs> so I was like, well, I, I don't really have a 40k army. Uh, they're like, well, you can start one with us because we're all not really playing fantasy anymore. So or I got you can not play. <laughs> yeah, so I kind of got like forced slashed coerced into um, 
into starting fantasy, or sorry, starting 40k, and I, I picked Tau. But there's another guy who is in a similar boat who was joining the group at the same time. His name's Brad. Um, he started Necrons, and he and I became good friends because we were sort of starting in the group around the same time period. Um, and uh, so he was starting Necrons, and I started Tau. He later started Black Templars. And, uh, and so as a result, um, he, he and I played a lot of games against each other, my Tau versus his Black Templars. And uh, a few months ago, he, he, uh, he texted me and said, hey, uh, I'm going to be uh, looking to get rid of these Black Templars. I don't use them anymore. I don't have anyone to play with anymore. They're just, he's, he's still keeping his Necrons, but, but the Black Templars are sort of his second army. He's like, do you know anyone who wants these? And I was like, I absolutely want them. Uh, the, the new book hadn't been announced yet, but I was like, yeah, like I have so many sentimental memories around fighting against this army. Um, I don't like. I, I I totally want to sort of keep them in the family, as it were. And, yeah. Um, and so I I I bought his uh, collection of old marines. There's just no primaris. They're all firstborn. <laughs> But then, then you proceeded to get a bunch of primaries. <laughs> well, so, yeah, I'm trying to figure out what to, how to sort of incorporate as many of these elements as I possibly can. Because yeah. obviously, like, the firstborn are in a weird spot right now. And I, as much as I want to use them, primaries are, like, better in just about every way. Right. Uh, and especially in a faction that wants to fight. <laughs> right. Because right. primaries get an extra attack. Um, so... I I'm probably gonna keep you know I'm gonna keep the Terminators, and I'm gonna keep the he's got a bunch of assault marines that are uh, I'm gonna convert to Vanguard vets, and he's got a Land Raider Crusader which is great, and he's got a, dre a dreadnought and some speeders which are great. Um, so you kind of he's got some multi multi attack bikes which are super great right now. So you you stumbled more or less into an army like I stumbled it, into it, an army that's right. Yeah now I mean like how. How has that experience been? Because I, I have to be honest with you, I think I, I don't think I would necessarily. Uh, man, maybe I've been tempted. Um, a, a buddy who was in the area of ours and moved had a beautiful Ultramarines army. Recently, put his Ultramarines army up for yep. sale for an insanely ridiculous price. Um, I actually reached out to him and was like, <clears throat> he was asking something like eleven $1 hundred. So for it. Austin? Yeah, Austin. I, yeah. I, I it was probably worth forty five hundred minimum. Yeah, um, and it's and painted really well. Painted very well by him, um, and you know you're never really going to you're never really going to get um, what your army is worth when you try to sell it. So giving it away or just asking for something like eleven hundred bucks isn't bad. But in his particular case, Ultramarines are very popular at the time. Yeah, they still are. I think he probably could have gone the forty five hundred. Sure. Um, I you know I even showed it to the guys over at Tabletop Titans and was yeah. like, hey. Can we, uh, do, do we need this? Unfortunately, it was like a direct overlap of everything we had almost. <laughs> um, so, you know, I've never otherwise been tempted to get it. Um, yeah. And, and, and what was, I don't know, like what, uh, the sentimental thing, but how, how are you feeling about this now? Do you have any kind of buyer's remorse or? Um, so if it didn't, if it was just a bunch of like uh, firstborn tactical marines, I think I probably would. Okay. But the fact that it had, I mean, it's got 20 tactical marines. Okay. Um, but the rest of it is is mostly, you know, like I said, the Terminators, the um, the Vanguard vets, and all the vehicles are still very relevant. Okay. So I don't, I feel, I feel fine about it. I'm probably going to sell a lot of that stuff. There's like, you know, like a hipster niche online. You know, some you. demand, some you. demand, yeah, you. people like me, uh, who will be like, yeah, I want these, like, he's, he's got, like, the sort of medium old assault terminators that are metal, but then he also has, like, a few of the, like, really, really old, like, second ed rogue trader era, like, boxy terminators that are shooty with power fists well, and storm bolters you, and stuff. You're gonna put so the, I'm going to put all that for sale and get rid of it. You're going to put but, it up on eBay. Let me ask you. Do yeah. you think there's a chance you'll just end up buying it back from yourself? That could happen. Yeah. <laughs> I might I might sell it and then five years from now I'll be like, man, you know what I really want is some old second ed rogue trader no, no, terminators. I <laughs> and I look on eBay <laughs> and there they are. No, I Somebody want you, else is selling them. I want you to like buy, buy them back, back from yourself right away. I want you to be like, I want to come in in the office oh, and see you like on eBay. Like, be like, oh, I got to win this bid. And I'm like, 
like, Brett, that's your that's user. Your name. <laughs> that's you, Brett. You can just stop it. Um, oh my gosh. Well, Mike. Uh, and then Val, is a question about Val. Val. Oh yeah, he's asking about um, Val. So, yeah, that's a good question. We are going to play Black Templars uh, on on Tabletop Titans on Saturday. I'm gonna I'm gonna be on the stream and and be playing these guys. Uh, and I'm gonna use uh, the uh, Abhor the Witch vow. So uh, that one is plus three inch move on your first turn if your opponent has any psychers. Um, this game will be against Tyranids, so I know that that they'll have some psychers. Um, but you do get to choose the vow ahead of time, like at, sorry, at the table. So which, you which is big. You don't have to choose it um, in the list building phase. Which is which yeah, would it's, be, it's a big deal. Which because, would be silly, right? Kind yeah, of. if you're choosing a, a vow that only benefits you if the opponent has psychers, and then you show up, they don't have any psychers, you feel pretty dumb. Brad, I have a question, real quick. Yep. I'm going to pass this to you. Yep. Um, here on on the sword, there's like a little mechanical piece. Yeah, you can see what I did on the. On yeah, that I guy. was gonna. Yeah, I guess that's really what I should do. You yeah, did not do it red. Okay, good. Mechanical uh, piece gets silver. Get, okay, awesome. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, and I think, uh, you know, the 5 plus, there's a, a vow for 5 plus feel, uh, uh, involved on the entire army. You don't get cover. I think sort of if you wanted to, to be competitive, if you wanted to, like, try your, try your best at winning the game, um, that's probably the best vow. And you don't get cover if you... If you uh, if you take that vow, that's sort of the downside of it. Um, but you know what units don't get that, uh, cover anyway are Dreadnoughts. And Dreadnoughts are really good right now in the meta, like aside from, you know, like having a five, but, but, but having a five of Invuln makes them even better. They don't care about the downside to the vow. And so like, as much as I sort of hate to say it, um, because sort of dread, dread spam is like, is the thing right now anyway. Right. I think sort of the best, you know, quote unquote best way to run Black Templars is uh, with, with the 5 plus Involved Vow and a bunch of dreads. But um, I don't own a lot of dreads and I don't kind of really want to own a lot of dreads. Dreads are supposed to be this like super rare thing and like it's a huge deal to like wake up one dreadnought. And, and go march off to like kill some super critical mission. Like that, having having five or six of them in a, in a list just feels weird to me. So uh, I'm not gonna do that. I think also um, there's a lot of, well, you'll if, if you watch the game on Sunday, you'll see. On Saturday. Um, Saturday. Sorry, on, on Saturday, yeah. You'll see um, there's this other sort of cool thing you can do in the in the list building phase where you can Sort of put upgrades on different characters for points. Pay pay ten points, twenty points to like upgrade individual models in units with sort of uh, relic, mini relics or extra abilities. And some of them can be quite strong, and the, it can be tempting to try to stack a bunch of them on one guy and turn turn that sergeant of some unit into like some crazy beat stick. Um, and I've kind of gone the other direction actually. Um, I'm going to put one upgrade on. A bunch of one, each one model in a bunch of different units, and so basically each unit of mine that you know makes it will have some nasty surprise, yeah. you know, hidden on the sergeant. And I'm kind of excited about that idea, um, and it also adds some flavor. Like each squad is not just a vanguard squad or an yeah. intercessor squad. It's like, yeah, this is the intercessor squad with the no minus to hit, flat three damage, power fist on the sergeant. And he's like been entrusted to carry this relic power fist and he's gonna, you know, show those heretics who's boss with it. Right. Okay, I'm done with the, uh, I'm done with this guy. Um, oh, with I, think his... I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go ahead and wor start working on brown. I've got brown here that I'm gonna do <coughs> on the, there's a bunch of leather pouches on these guys, which is oh, okay. pretty cool. Oh, right. And they were already done on this guy, I think. Uh, no, I just did one. Oh, one of them. One. Like start. Yeah, yeah, I just started on one. Okay. Um, and all of this silver and everything that I'm seeing here? Yeah. Um, all of this is uh, the silver I'm using? Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah. 
And yeah. it's just, it looks this kind of dinginess because we did a wash we over it. We put a wash over it, yeah. Okay. So our, our silver recipe today is, um, what is it, iron hands steel? There you yeah, go. yeah, yeah. Uh, and we're, we're doing a, an Agrax or shade or a sepia wash over the, the, uh, the metallic paint so that it makes it look sort of tarnished, not, not so much rusty, uh, no. but just like tarnished yeah, a little antique. bit. Yeah, antique -y. Yeah. Thank you, Willow. Um, Willow says, color used to frustrate me a lot until I realized I enjoy bright colors. Shifted my sisters from uh, corn red to uh, bloody red. Oh, from C corn red to V bloody red and never looked back. Um, yeah, I am with you, Willow. I also like bright colors. And a in person general, after your own heart, yeah. Yeah, in general, I feel that um, people paint many armies um, too dark. Yeah, I, I'm guilty of that. <clears throat> yeah, and I think lots of times this means they just get lost on the tabletop. And you're yeah. you kind of like, we've talked about this before on the channel. Um, this is kind of the painting style of some games. Right. historicals and stuff. Yep. And I've never really walked up, and I know that people are going to be able to say, oh, you've never seen this or that. I'm sure that, of course, there are situations where I could walk yeah. up and see um, Tomahawks and Muskets or whatever the, that game is and, and or some one of the historical yeah. antiquity games and be wowed by it. But I've been to a lot of conventions. I've seen a lot of these games. I've never really been wowed by sort of, you know, the models are usually kind of small. Yep. Um, the train's usually pretty bland. Yep. And they kind of you kind of walk up, and it doesn't really look like people are, are playing something that they put a lot of love into, although right. I'm sure they did. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. in a way that's different than... It doesn't than pop, this, yeah. you know? And I think everyone gets caught... A lot of folks will get caught up in, myself included again, trying to, like, make their thing look as real as possible. And that's the, like, the little death. It's like, as soon as you start trying to, like, make it look as real as possible, like, at some point... If taken to the extreme, it just it just looks really brown and gray and bland. And um, you know, edge highlighting is an attempt to like allow. It's basically a tool that allows you to use bland colors and still have a model pop. Right. Um, edge highlighting is kind of like, hey, we're we're still playing with toys. We're here. still playing with toys. Yeah. It's like, hey, yeah, I know my model is is bland colors, but uh, it's 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 a toy it's a toy that's painted bland colors. I mean, I, I think that is also part of the view, and um, you know, obviously, this is largely a, a, a Warhammer Games Workshop centric podcast or not podcast, geez, um, stream. But also, we you know other we have other we've played other games, um, the Star Wars, and we painted some of their models. We have never done historicals, and I don't know that we ever really would. Um, but, you know, to Willow's point, I, I think that the 40K and especially the Age of Sigmar worlds are really like that. And, yeah, they almost always look better. You really, if you want to wow people, I, I, I'm with you, Willow. Like, you want to wow people. Um, I always, I've said this before on stream, I believe, or maybe this is the first time, but I always kind of think about um, being at Mountain View Game Castle, which is now closed, but was where we used to play. And it was, it was neat when, like, kids would come up uh, be maybe between the ages of eight and and twelve, and just be really blown away by uh, the way things looked on the tabletop. Yep. Right. And I don't think that they ever really got blown away by seeing a bunch of like brown guardsmen. Yeah. On a on a brown board. <laughs> frankly, I, I just don't I don't think that wows anyone. Um, but or not even just kids, but just you know. Um, people who, who are just impressed by what you've done. Yeah, it's tricky. You know, you and I both play Tau, and the Tau sort of way of fighting is to camo their, paint their armor a camo color that sort of blends in with their surroundings on whatever planet they're deploying to. They don't have, like, uh, you know, Space Marines have, like, a chapter color or something like that. Their, right. their sept is denoted just with the color of their unit markings. And so... That gives them the freedom er, to like you know camo camouflage themselves visually. But the, if you do that, if you again like if you actually lean into that, you just end up with models that blend into your terrain table. Yeah, with an army like the Tau, what you what I like to do is 
Um, like kind of imagine the land is gr like for my towel, the land is gray, they're green. Yeah. But then I, I, when I do my bases, one of the plants is kind of the same color as the towel. Yes. Exactly, or yeah. like, you know, you sort of imagine some small component, like maybe they're on a mountain, you know, or, or an ash world, a black ash world, but there's like this beautiful uh, red tree that grows there. Right. And so your towel can actually be red and they're going to, that's really what they're camouflaging to. Yeah. Um, I think you get kind of a better look that way as opposed to just being like, okay, we're in a mud world, so we have mud colored towel. Right. It's like. Yeah. Zach, can you switch over to yeah. uh, sh shoulder zoom when you there have a chance? Go. So I just want to talk about basing a little bit. Um, so these guys I've uh, pre-applied before the stream. I pre-applied my basing material, which is um, I use the Citadel uh, texture, texture paints or technical paints. And so I've got one of the texture paints here on uh, part of the base. And then I've got, and this is a crackle paint. And then also on another part of the base, I've got just the, the texture paint. So uh, you can see here, because the paints themselves are different colors, it's easy to see kind of how I've split up uh, the, the base and done a little bit of, of each on different parts of the base. And if, we'll see the other model that Zach's working on in a little bit. But what I do now is I'm just gonna paint over this with a uniform color. So I have the brown out right now, I'm doing the, the pouches. Um, and I'm going to do the this same brown on on the base as well while I've got it out, and and so in this way, like yeah, the 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 bases or the 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 um, technical paints have a pigment in them. They are a color, uh, and it's great if you can if you get lucky and you you want to paint your your base to be that color anyway. Um, but I often find that I, I'm not lucky, and <laughs> I end up having to. Uh, and it's fine. It doesn't. It's just one extra step. Uh, but I just paint whatever. I put whatever technical paints I want on the base, and then I go ahead and paint over them with whatever color I want those technical, uh, you know, technical paints to be. And then we'll do after this. Uh, I will go over this with null oil, so the get the black ink all into the crevices of the of the crackle paint specifically. So this is mostly to get get those cracks um, highlighted. Uh, and then I'll, I'll dry brush over the whole thing with a lighter shade of brown. And that's that's my basing <coughs> recipe. And then we'll do uh, a, a few gr tufts of grass or um, some reeds we did. We tried uh, some some tall grass on, yeah. did on you the like sample those? model. It was great. I loved it. Yeah, the reeds are, are really a big Yeah, model. this is a basing product that Zach's turned me on to. Um, um, I mean, well, actually, uh, Kat kind of left these here when she was on the show. Um, yeah. But I, I had previously just been using old paint brushes yeah. and clipping them. But we'll, we'll kind of show you guys that. Or, or, or we may not. We'll see how far we get. But um, either way... We will cover that. And you can see it, if we don't get to it, you can see it in the, the stream where um, we did the autumn tree yeah. a couple weeks back. Um, thank you, Kevin. Uh, hey, I painted the blue black Templar for Brian. Oh, my Very gosh. Very nice idea to make a warm color one. That's awesome. I chose Corvus black for a vibrant black and cream shoulders. Have fun. Yes, awesome. So, Kevin, thank you so much. When... Um, when I first saw Brian's Black Templar, I absolutely fell in love with them, which is why I immediately, like, basically just tried to copy your paint scheme. Uh, and it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't until getting three model, three units in that I was like, uh, I think I want to try something different. Uh, but yeah, I, I totally loved it from the moment I first saw it. And I think it's, it's super well done. You did a great job. Um, I, and, and I think Corvus Black, to be... For, for what it's worth, the uh, the Corvus Black, we tried that on, on these models uh, when we were kind of experimenting with it a little bit yesterday. And it has, a, well, my you and I had different opinions on this, but my, my eye read it as a cool black. It had a little bit of blue in it to my eye. And so that would make a lot of sense on those models. Yeah. Um, and I was, I was, I think that that makes sense that that's why you used it. Yeah, um, yeah. There, it is a great looking army. Um, and <clears throat> the the other thing, though, Kevin, is that we just 
honestly, that's that the, doing the Black Templars in the blue is is, is so big right now. Yeah. So what am I? Uh, are you, are what, you at a stopping point? Yeah. Let's switch here. And, okay. Um, I can Brett, do brown pouches. You can kind of also let me know what I've missed or what I need to do. I'm I have your test model here. Yeah. And so I'm the, keeping an eye on him. The belt buckle <coughs> gets silver, and these these like canisters on his belt okay. that get silver also. Okay. Should um, I? But otherwise, it. Oh, and then there's like a top. Oh, panel. the top panel. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, it's perfect. Okay. It's should perfect. I take that back and do it? Do you have something to do with them, or nope, should I'll do? We'll, we'll, okay. I'll, I'll do uh, the brown on this guy. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thanks again, Kevin, so much. Yeah. Um, thank you. And thank you, Stephen. Want to shout out you guys because of this community, I found Broken Chef and got two Primaris Librarians coming to support my salamanders. Oh, wow. You guys should be proud of what you're helping to build. Um, well, that is awesome to hear. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, we uh, are happy to hear that. We're inspired by you guys yeah. as well. Um, Truly. It's a, it's a two-way street. It wouldn't be fun to do this um, like if there was no camera there and we were just talking, but would we keep pretending I mean, to talk? I mean, when, when you and I have hobbied together without a camera on. We just talk. Yeah. We do talk. So yeah. I guess, that, I guess <laughs> we, we just, it, yeah, we would talk. Okay, okay. No, we but just we'll, kind of sit in silence. No, yeah, we sit, we sit in silence, totally. Um, oh my gosh, that's a good question we should ask the, 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 the group next, maybe next week. Like, what do you watch or listen to? When you hobby, right? Everybody does different things. Um, Lo-fi beats. Is that what you do? For right? studying slash chilling. Uh, well, n sometimes. Uh, Leah and I uh, have a very, like the Venn diagram of our musical tastes has a very narrow overlap. I see. And, and lo-fi is one of, one of the things in that that overlapping part of the Venn diagram. <laughs> okay, so yeah, just kind of <laughs> So if she's, if she's within earshot, then yeah, it's probably either lo-fi or um, global chill. Oh, okay. Well, hey, let's chat a little bit about this recipe in general and this yeah. process, because we've been kind of cruising along and doing things and, and touching in with, with peeps at home to say what we're doing. Yep. But I have to say, there's actually not a lot of airbrushing um, there's not. on this. This, to, is, to this is this is definitely process, a Brett right? recipe, right? Uh, <laughs> I feel like if you or Adrian were painting these models, a it would have been like instead of ten percent airbrushing, ninety percent brushwork, which is what this is, it would have been ninety percent airbrushing and ten percent brushwork, and we'd be done by now. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's hard to say. Um, I mean, honestly, the, one of the issues is that these are actually the push to fit. These guys. are, yeah, that's true. For, for sure, whenever I've done Marines in the past, I always leave the shoulder pads off. Right. Um, and, and so that process would go way faster. That simplifies a lot yeah. if the shoulder pads are separate, and then you can, you know, because there are a lot of Marines that have sort of distinct shoulder pad colors. Right. And Black Templar Chief among them. And we had to kind of shoehorn in this... This, uh, you know, c cover up our overspray and all that kind of stuff. Um, I also would probably keep the chain sword separate. Oh, I mean, yeah. Yeah, th because their guns are like this kind of, on the, on the Black Templar, their guns are like this red color. Uh, by the way, Brett, I didn't actually, that guy hasn't gotten uh, the next layer of red. I don't know, did we do Mephiston red? Yep. Okay. I didn't get to that on him either. That's fine, I'm just doing the brown. Okay. Um, so I, I, uh, I, I would almost definitely leave any of these weapons that we're going to do this red color off to the extent that it's possible. Yeah. Um, but again, these are, these are push to fit and you don't necessarily have those options on, on, yeah. on push to fit. <coughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, I really, uh. This is my first time assembling push to fit Marines. Yeah. How'd you feel? Um, it was... So I would prefer a fully fledged kit, you know, with sort of more posability options or, uh, like you said, sort of the ability to uh, do some more airbrushing before assembly. Um, but I really liked the sort of stock poses that they came in, so I certainly don't can't complain about that. And I think if you know if I had a whole army. 
of push to fit intercessors, I think the you'd start to notice the duplication in the posing. Mm -hmm. um, right. But you know, this was a box that I, I went to a tournament, uh, lost all of my games. Okay. I was zero for three. Okay. Um, casual zero for three. <laughs> casual zero for three. <laughs> Uh, but I won the door prize, so I got this like starter set with with Space Marines and Necrons in it, and so the uh, five the five assault intercessors in there are going to become Black Templars. Uh, but yeah, I think you know mixing a few if you happen to have some or you can find some cheap on on eBay, the which they usually are. Which they usually are. Yeah, yeah. having a small number of push fit. Space Marines mixed in amongst your other boys. Yeah. It's like, it's fine. I like it, honestly. I have, um, they saved my butt a little bit because I don't like the Asuriani that have the, the Guardian kit is old and it doesn't come with a lot of extra pieces. Right. And you actually have to use the naked heads. Oh no. Um, for some of them. And they're awful looking. They look like, they yeah, look like the faces fantasy, look so weird. fantasy miniatures from the 90s. And I'm just like not into them. So um, fortunately, there's a Guardian push to fit kit um, that comes with four Guardians. So I was able to just buy two boxes of yeah, them, or one box. Actually, one box covers twenty Guardians. Yeah, yeah, because you, you you can then not use those weird. Uh, there's also these weird helmets in the Guardian kit for the guy using the weapon. Yeah, and it has like a weird like visor. Oh wow, he's got like a scanner visor. He or looks like a uh, visor. who's the guy in um, Jordy. Jordy he looks like Jordy from Star Trek Next Generation. Yeah, yeah, and I don't, I don't like it at all. Hmm. So um, he, I got to replace both the naked head and the Jordy uh, visor. So I'm going to have that similar problem um, in the new Black Templar box. There's a Marshall, a Black Templar Marshall, which is like the Black Templar captain. He's okay. called a, he's called a Marshall. Okay. Um, and there is no helmeted head option for the Marshall. Oh no! And you also. I was, I was looking at the like at Brian the and like me. We the, the three of us all like very helmeted heads. We yeah, don't. Yeah. Like, we don't why love would the, you take your helmet off? We don't. Yeah. That's dumb. Anyway, I don't like. Not trying to like. If you like unhelmeted heads, that's fine. I personally prefer. Well, it's it's fine, but Brett like, hates you. I have to have, like <laughs> I have to have, like have a justification for like why every model is posed a certain way. Like they're doing this thing, and like I have head cannon for all of it, and like I can't think of any reason why somebody would take their their helmet off in the middle of a fight. Uh, for me, it's honestly like... So I don't pose any of them For me, the, the, there are two reasons I tend to not do it. One is I like the uniform look of them not looking like that. And yeah, the armies I true. armies I've tended to do for 40K really want that uniform look. It makes it easy to like distinguish the sergeant, I guess. It, it's also... There's other ways to do that, right? That's but, right. But it's also... For me, it kind of comes back to what I was saying earlier about like one of my biggest problems when I start a new project. It, it really comes down to like, I set up a, 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 a process. Yeah. And if you now, I get to you in the process and your head is, is oh. unhelmeted, now oh I'm gosh. like, now instead of finishing this unit in, you know, six right. hours of painting, it might be, it might be eight and a half. I might have had to go an extra hour and a half just to do your, your, your head. One, right? The one guy's head. Yeah, exactly. So I don't really, I don't really like that. Um, honestly, it's, and, and, if I loved the look, then I would do it. It'd be worth it to me, but it's not worth it to me because I don't love the look either. So I'm definitely like, I don't like the way this looks, and it slows up my process. Yeah. So I'm I'm gonna just put a helmet on. Yeah, I hear ya. Yeah. Uh, Guardians and Eldar don't even have special like sergeants or anything in their units. So. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So then Guardians, there's really no reason to yeah. not do it. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So I'm done with Brown on this guy. Uh, I can give him back to you to do the metallics. I'm going to do a shoulder zoom here. Let's see where okay. he, how he's looking. Okay, so here we have, yeah, so we've got, we've got cream color on the, we've got, sorry, terminata stone on the shoulder pad and the uh, chest emblem. Uh, we've got a blocking in of um, um, word bearers red on the gun and on the chainsword, as well as our iron hand steel applied. We have a few more bits that need our hand steel. The belt buckle we're gonna do, and these little canisters on the belt. I think those are grenades. Yeah, I I, I did notice those. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah, then, and then I kind of forgot about them. And then we've got the purity seal on the leg, and uh, this one doesn't have a purity seal on the backpack, but uh, 
Yeah, so this guy's this coming guy along. This guy actually doesn't... The one I'm painting right now, I don't think has any purity seals. Okay. Um, yeah, this is good. Uh, and then at some point here pretty soon, we're going to start doing washes. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to... I'm going to... Do some metallics on this guy, okay. just to finish up the metallics. I'm uh, finishing up metallics on this guy as well, and then I gotta kind of take stock and see where where I'm at. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, maybe now's a good time to look at some fan stuff. Nice. Because we have that favorite part of the show. Yeah. Um, so we always go through, pick out some fan stuff. We call this segment. Okay, we didn't actually ask him, but we think John would like this fan stuff. <laughs> Um, we never asked John, but we think he would like it. Um, here's the, 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 everyone's nightmare unit currently in yeah, the 40k that a, meta. This is, that is, a, a, is that a Dakajet? Looks like it, yeah. And here is uh, somebody doing, 40K um, like a sinking a head into some pink foam. I love that, oh, of course. Nice. Yeah, it looks amazing. Um, off to a good start. I'm very excited to see that Look get painted. Look at the OSL on this guy. This looks really strong. There's a bunch of these that he's doing, um, and they all look great. Um, lots of times when I get a, and pick one of these pictures, like these Nurgle, those here, Terminators. I think these are Plague Marines. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll circle back. By the way, we cycle through these always. Um, the the uh, oh, both that that Thousand Suns and those Nurgle yeah. Marines, um, the the Plague Marines. Lots of pictures of those actually, and I always kind of have to just go through and pick the best one. Um, <clears throat> so lots of if if you want to go. Check out the different hobby threads. I, I can't remember exactly which hobby thread those were in, but um, they look amazing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Those wings, the shading on those wings. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. It looks very cool. Um, this thing looks amazing. The name is super tiny down there. It can be hard to what do. What model is that? Yeah, I don't know. It looks AOS, but I, I don't know. Um, it can be hard to do like a ghost effect when we yeah. come back to that one. With, with the ghost effect looking, um, like the big problem with the ghost effect is in some ways what you are doing is you're, you're making your life easier because realistically you're, you're not going to have to do a lot of different details. And, yeah, right. But I, sometimes that shows. It shows that the person has decided that like, cool, if I do a whole ghost army, I can... Um, I can get my army done real fast. I don't fast. have to do colors. I don't have right. to do you know a lot of the detail work. Just becomes ethereal. Exactly. Ghostly, ghostly paint. Yeah, exactly. So um, this person though that that thing um, you know whatever their process it looks amazing. was, amazing. Yeah. Whether it was fast or not, it looks amazing. Um, and I have some uh, at some point I have to get to the the ghost army from uh, Lord of the Rings in the box. What? Really? Yeah, and I, at some point I have to paint them. And I know they have a particular look from Lord of the Rings. And I know that that step is actually very easy to do, but I think I might kind of copy this guy. Are these like the the wraith, the wraiths? The ring wraiths? No, um, although that this look would look great on them. No, it's the like the army of the guys who are banished and then they just... Oh, yeah. It, it's they're like the guys who along with the eagles it's like why didn't we just right. ask them in the first place to right. do this yeah um they, oh by the way this brood lord amazing a, from a, ajax a, ajax the lake yeah that's looks great amazing. yeah the um, highlighting on the and the blending on the claws yeah really nice uh okay couple, one more thing i want to go back here one more one more go around here mm -hmm. um, oh this is yeah very excited to see this paint it yeah, that, I'm. I'm curious. It looks like he's going for like a, or they're going for like a brown brown palettes. Yeah. Um, hmm. Curious to see see what they do with that. Um, okay, there's also a really dope space wolf in here somewhere. Yeah. That we kind of glossed over. Um, is amazing, amazing you think that's stuff. A there it is. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know my space. Claws. I don't know yeah. my space wolf characters. He's standing on a giant. He's like. Dreadnought sized. Yeah. Oh, this this is the orc mech shop and everything. Uh, so yeah, um, I'm I'm pretty excited about um, any terrain always. So and there's some cool cool ones. Yeah, yeah, these extras just look amazing. Wow. Yeah, lots of detail going on there. But like, oh man, it can be hard to get the baroque look without overdoing things. Yeah, without the having whole, it look busy. Right. The whole right. purpose of baroque is that it's it's too much. And so to get that look and then say, okay, but it still works to the modern eye, yeah. quite good, I think. Man, yeah, I love this, this, tiny, this yeah. ghost effect. 
Well, if you um, haven't already and you are hobbying, please do join the Titans Discord. This is a Discord that we share with Tabletop Titans. Um, so we're all, in it, we're all in this Discord. But there is a big hobby section. We even have a channel now for a chat about the show. Um, and some of you guys in there are chat, and I think you're trying to be polite and not at Brett and I too much. But if you have a direct question about something you see on the show, you should add us in that channel. Yeah. Because I, I'll go through and I'll see people asking questions like, does anybody know what uh, color Zach used last night on the yeah. show? And it's like, just at me. Um, I'll, I'll happily answer quick questions like that easily, or even sometimes if they're not so quick. Um, yeah, that's what that channel's for, is, is if something came up or you had a question about something we did or said and you didn't think about it until the next day, then... yeah. Um, but otherwise, uh, there's a number of channels there to post your hobby pro uh, progress in. We like seeing stuff that is fully painted. We like seeing stuff that is on its way to being fully painted, like that awesome uh, pink that train, board, that yeah. train board that's happening. Um, and we're always happy to look at all of this stuff. I'll be honest, I'm almost always very surprised, in a good way. Uh, not yeah, that's that I, amazing. Not that my expectations are low, because they're not, but whenever I pull up, and, and start looking through those, I'm usually pretty blown away by some of the stuff that people are working on. Um, so, yes, please uh, send your stuff, submit your stuff. Oh, and as you saw where it said there in, in point number three, I'll pull it back up here, put some ID on it, like use a photo editor yeah. add, to add your Discord, Instagram, whatever, um, especially if you're doing any kind of commissions or anything like that, uh, so that people can see, like, cool, this is, this is that person's work. You yeah. Know? Definitely. Thank you, Melody. She's asking, is that an Aries primed gold in the back? Actually, Ooh. it is. Um, sure enough. There's a little bit of a story behind that, although... Um, Just a casual Aries in the, in the background. Yeah, so yeah, I... No big deal. I've been cleaning out the terrain room here <laughs> at Titan Studio, and one of the things I'm really big into doing is finding stuff that shouldn't be there. And throwing it out? And trying to throw it away. Yeah. Um, now, typically I ask, I say, hey guys, can I throw this away? And everyone looks at me like I'm insane. Um, and then they're like, well, why did you throw that away? I'm like, well, look, we're never gonna use this for anything, right? Like Bridger's like, it's so bad, I'm never gonna use it, I don't want it. Um, I think Brian got it for him or something, and Bridger's just like, whatever, I don't want this Ares gunship. Um, so we had this Ares gunship. Um, and we have kind of excited about the, uh, the uh, announcement release with the Custodes and the Gene Stealer box. Gene Stealer called, yeah. Yeah, we have some plans for um, our December terrain project that we're going to be doing. Yes. That kind of is around mostly the Gene Stealer part, part of this. Yep. But this Aries has been, by the way, I should say, I pulled this Aries out of the terrain room and sat it over here in the hobby area maybe about a month and a half ago. It's kind of been down on a lower shelf um, <laughs> because I just didn't want it in the terrain room. Um, and so we've had it, and now I'm thinking it's gonna get added to a board uh, that we're, we're redoing one of our terrain boards, a, a favorite of, of, the, of the guys, especially Adrian. Kind of took that board, broke it apart, gonna rebase that board, and we're gonna add like this add-on pack, which we're, Adrian and I are very excited about doing where it's, it's like this small little component, mostly of scatter, right. that tells the story of some sort of force taking over the board. Right. In this case, Gene Steeler caught. Yeah, in the past we've done like sort of Xeno-specific boards. We've had like a Necron board, and we've had a Tau board, and we've had an Eldar board. And, and like those are cool projects. They just The problem is they just don't get used very much because you have to have one of those factions in the game for it to really make sense. And so... Well, like yeah, a, yes and no, but yes and usually no. at least we feel obligated to have them at least there during that week, right? Yeah. And, and if a faction like the Tau aren't super popular at the moment, we have a Tau board, right? We have our Tau Cold Weather Research Facility, but it's with one of our friends right now. It's not even in the studio because... We play Tau so infrequently yeah. currently. When, yeah, but. So our, our current line of thinking, though, on like how you address this problem is, it, rather than having a Tau board or a Necron board for ex or a Gene Stealer cult board, for example, you just have a generic sort of city board, Imperial city board, and then or a generic forest board, and then you have like add-on packs that you can like sprinkle bits of scatter terrain or maybe some like add-ons to specific buildings like banners or um, you know some vehicles or some some crates or some signage that 
identifies this as like, oh, not, not, this isn't just a random hab block. This is a hab block that's been taken over by some gene stealer cult. Exactly. And so you can turn this from like a generic, generic board into a faction specific board to tailor for like a specific faction that's in the game. And so this is like a direction we're gonna be exploring in the coming months. Yeah. And the idea is that this Ares will be part of the first of those explorations. Yeah, yeah and I think, um, you know, like to Brett's point, we, we sort of have start doing like here's a wilderness setting on its own, and then here here it is with yeah. people or whatever. And so, you know, I, I, I know um, I, I'm intending to do one in next year. One of the board projects we're going to be doing is an autumn board um, so with autumn kind of leaf foliage and all this stuff. That is, for 40K, is like a towel, is another towel board. Yep. But then also we'll, we'll have some AOS components to it, so it can it can double as an AOS board. So That's great. Um, that, that just helps us at the studio when we pull boards out for the week. We can say, oh, okay, we're going to play a towel versus somebody game once on this board. Then we're going to play an AOS game once on this right. board. And then for the third game, you know, we can actually probably just toss some Imperial terrain on it or whatever. So. Yep. Um, just it, it does change how we weather the board um, because then you know we need sets to kind of match. But we're starting to think about that more and say, here's the stuff weathered with Anthonian camo shade and greened. Here's the stuff that's you know for for plantless worlds that has no moss or life growing on it. Yep. Um, but Gene Sealer cults, as Brett's saying, they're just one of these factions. We think probably along with Nurgle, we'll do one in, in the new year, kind of one of these packs for Nurgle. Where we're yeah, saying, it up. yeah, we're saying like, here's how you take an existing board, um, and you can add these things to it to make this game look like it's you know like been infested with Nurgle or been right. infested by gene stealers. Yeah. So, um, yep, Melody, that's the goal with with this thing. We think we're gonna probably make it kind of like a crashed piece um, that maybe I don't know. I'm kind of uh, we've only had this idea the past couple of days, um, and I, I don't know. I'm kind of I'm kind of into the idea of it maybe like it's been crashed for a little while and gene stealers have actually turned it into like a base of operations like mm. they've like like they're like not using it as a flying thing but they're using right. it as like a building almost yeah. now yeah. like like a forward base um so we have to figure something out for it but that is what it is all right i've got this guy kind of up to snuff on the metallics uh i can go ahead and do the second coat of red on the weapons does that okay. make sense where are you at with that guy? I am just. I just forgot about the grenade again. Okay. Uh, but I'm doing the grenade, and then he's done with uh, all of his little coats of, okay. of stuff. So the the red on the weapons, we did a first coat of word bearers red, and then a second coat of. And now we're going to do a second coat of Mephiston red, and the idea is that uh, neither of these coats really, because it's red over black. Neither of them really covers fully. And so you get uh, some just variations in the color palette over the fl big flat surfaces of the weapon. Uh, and those variations are interesting. So they add, just add a little bit of visual interest to the, to the piece. So we're actually not trying to have a fully, you know, smooth painted. Oh no, breath head. Oh my gosh. It's, it's annoying, right? It is, yeah. yeah. We should re-aim that camera. Well, I, I know. The, the problem is uh, it, it's a fine balance between getting a good view and allowing the person who's in the seat that you're in to try to like, like really hunch over, right. which you shouldn't do whenever you, you don't have to do in general. It's not good for us, but um, sometimes you, it's just what you need. And then usually those times correspond with when we want to show what the hobby, you know, what that yeah. person's doing. Yeah, when you want to show something that's small and detailed, you probably want to be leaning over to make sure you're doing a good job of it. Right. The lighting in here can also be odd, right? I don't know if you've noticed this, Brett, but... Um, yeah, I can't see anything right now. Yeah, sometimes you can't really see much. <laughs> oh, man. We have to, maybe we'll have to try some other, some other lighting. Um, the forward lighting, I think, is... Is really the problem. Um, we don't normally when when Brett and I hobby here under uh, normally when we're not streaming we, we have these lights off to the side that are that are on us. 
but we don't have those on. And I, I hobby fine normally here. Yeah. But I think it's it's these. This is actually not bad. I'm thinking like we've put them off to the side a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's might, fine. It's a little better. Okay. I am. Uh, I am kind of following. Oh. Oh. You know what I have to do. Oh. I have to do. I. This, this is, is funny because Zach hates brushwork. No, I don't. I, I don't hate brushwork. You hate, don't hate brushwork. I don't hate brushwork. I I don't. I like to try to go as far as I can without. Before I, not without, but before I hit brushwork. Right. I, I, I'm, I'm happy to be like expanding your comfort zone a little bit. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I, I, I definitely, uh, for, for, for some new projects coming down the pipeline in the next year, I'm, I'm intending to get to up my brush game a lot more um, because I'll, I'll have to. Um, to, for painting faces and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I, I, haven't, I haven't played an army, worked on an army project where I really have to go in and paint faces um, that, are, that, are, that need to be kind of characterful right. and interesting, but the Daughters of Cain do have that. Oh, um, yeah. Whereas even, even, um, even the, the Ogor, the Beast Claw Raiders I have, they don't, you know, they, they kind of have these gruff, mean faces. And then for eyes, yeah. I pretty much just put non-oil gloss. So they get like these black, beady eyes, yep. which is actually a great, it's a good look. It's a good look. Um, but with the daughters, I'm going to have to do makeup. I'm going to have to do eyes that don't look either terrified, you know, like deer in headlights or don't look like cross-eyed or whatever. Right. Um, so I, I have to up my brush skills for some of this stuff anyway. And I, upping my brush game is something I've been... Um, Aiming is, is a, actually a, a resolution, to be honest with, with you. Um, like a New Year's resolution kind of thing? I guess so. I mean, like, it's something I would definitely have, have to start doing. So, and it does correspond with a calendar change in the year. A new army resolution. <laughs> yeah. We talked in the past about how uh, whenever you start a new project, it can be good to, like, set yourself some growth goal. Like, sure, hey, I always, like, sure, always. You got to. Or, like, with this project, I'm going to try to like improve my X skill. Yeah. Whatever that is. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like for you, it's going to be faces. Um, but, but in general, I'm, I'm like I said, this upcoming year, I'm trying to up my, my brushwork level. I'm trying to um, lean a little bit more into some center pieces. I'm going to be kind of redoing a set, or not redoing, but adding a centerpiece to my Ogor army. Oh yeah, uh, which is just another frost lord, but we're gonna do some conversion work on him and um, build him up to look a little more exciting. I'll have to I'm excited him. for that. Yeah, um, I, I actually got him today and the, or yesterday, I think, in the mail, and I'll have to uh, bring that in and show it to you. But um, in general, I want, want to be able to kind of just up my painting level a little bit. Yep. Brushwork, um, display cool. boards, and, and center pieces are kind of the main goal. Um, and so, especially for my daughter's army, and you know, Marathi is already like an amazing centerpiece. So, um, unlike the Ogors, which like you want to buy a bunch of these giant monsters, and then suddenly you don't have a centerpiece. Right. You have a bunch of you giant have monsters. Many, many center. Right. Pieces. Um, with with daughters, they have Marathi. You can only take one Marathi because she's an independent character. You know, she's a unique character. And so, what? You can only take one Marathi. Yeah. So, um, okay. I don't. I, I don't know. I think maybe I'm looking around here. Did you get all your Mephisto? You know, is it time for Mephisto? Oh, he needs Mephisto on red. Yeah, let me do that. And you want me to do that? Can, can I see? Oh, okay. That's your guy. Uh huh. You want to trade? Well, what would I do here? Uh, so I need Metallic on the backpack. Oh, okay. And he's got Mephisto on him. And then as, once you do those two, once you do the Metallic on the backpack, we could go right into edge highlighting. Is kind of the next thing. Okay, fun. Um, yeah, we're, uh, we're just about done with the blocking here. So this is, I don't know, for I guess a lot of people would say if you're doing brushwork, this is probably the least fun part of it. You're just doing like, you know, lots of bulk paint application and none of it looks amazing because it's all very flat colors, not a lot of visual interest. You're not picking out details really. You're just like putting bulk swaths of paint on the model. I, w I will say that um, I am into, we were kind of talking about this yesterday, I do love red, black, and white together. It's a great yeah. look. 
Um, and I do really like the silver added in, and I like the way you've done this this back panel silver. You know, on that these was guys. a last minute addition, and I wasn't sure I would like it, and and I I, I decided that I did like it a lot. It adds a spot of color that yep. isn't usually there. Yeah. And look, I, I I do think that it's it's a great looking um, it, it it's a great looking army. Um, and a great looking color scheme, the black. But frankly, what really does, in my opinion, make this these models look great um, is you, like your weathering process. Oh yeah. And then also the red and the cream. Yeah. Um, the black is there really because they're black Templars and it's just kind of hanging out and yeah. um, it, it, it's holding everything else up. Right. But what really what your eyes go to, I, for me, um, even if we look at Kevin's model again, uh, autofocus, gotta love it. Okay. Even if we go to Kevin's model here again, same thing, right? Like for me, my eyes um, really are attracted to the shoulder pads and the guns, the the red and the cream. Yeah. Um, the black is is a conduit for these things, really. And sometimes I think people over, um, you know, maybe, maybe expect. I guess got kind of got to love all too the much from the black. Yeah, I think people are like, oh, there are all these magic tricks we can do with black to make black look not black or make black look bright or whatever. Yeah. And, and there are, and there's some very cool good stuff. Good looking black. There's some good stuff. But I, I think at the end of the day, like there has to be some other color in there. Or like like we saw earlier, that fan, uh, that ghost horse thing, I yeah. think was really incredible. Um, I got to hit that person up and see maybe what's going on there. Because I love that recipe. Yeah, well, um, the weathering, we're going to get to that in just a second. Um, it's really... I, it, on the test model, I didn't actually use any weathering powders, but I, I intend to uh, do some some brown. I have a brown weathering powder that matches the color of the base. Okay. And and you just kind of apply it to like the boots and the like lower parts of the legs. Right, right, right. Uh, maybe the joints because you what can imagine. Now, what brand of weathering powder are you using? It's Vallejo. Vallejo weathering. Okay. You can imagine that it like it collects in the joints. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the dust in the planet kind of collects in the joints and stuff. So, um. I also like the way the backpack on your on your Marines is. I'm gonna do a shoulder zoom. Let's see. Sure. Um, I also like the way the backpack has this silver rim down on the bottom part here, uh, because again, another thing that people do is not yeah, do any of this stuff to the backpack. Uh, th those, yeah. Now, yeah, the, the deeper down, vents. further down, the other little vents. I, I typically do yeah. that. I've always done those, a different color. Yeah. <clears throat> but this I, was something I copied from Kevin's model. I don't think <laughs> um, I don't think they're as prominent on first-gen Marines, on firstborn. Mm. Um, yeah. But, like, the, the, the gap, or not gap, but the, the chunk off of them here. The delineation, excuse me, is kind of the word I'm looking for. Yeah, you're just, you're just picking up uh, a color that... Um, or an area that needs needs breaking up a little bit. You know, right. big swaths of of black need need to be broken up a little bit. Yeah. So what is our next step once this guy's all blocked? Uh, up? Cool. So you ready? Yeah. So we can do um, we can do some edge highlighting. Okay. So our recipe for edge highlighting is is going to be two stages. Okay. Uh, so. This is a thing that I've never tried before uh, until now. So this is, if, if we were talking before about sort of things we're going to ex expand our skill sets. Yeah. And it's like two-stage edge highlight is, some, is new to me. Okay. Um, and our first step is, is russet brown, which is the brown that we are using on the base and the brown that's on the leather pouches. Uh, it's this guy. Oh, okay. And russet so, brown. Yeah. And so maybe I, I can do a little bit of a... Um, uh, a little bit of a demonstration here. Okay, a shoulder. Um, we'll do a little yeah, zoom a little, here on you. Just uh, yeah, that's fine. So, if if this is the edge highlight, uh, I'm gonna do something sort of like this, where it's like sort of fat in the middle and sort of tapers to the to the ends. So this is this is kind of what I'm trying trying to do with my paintbrush when I'm I'm doing an edge highlight. So I want something that's that uh, it has it tapers it tapers out to a thin a thin tip on either end, I guess. And then 
I'm going to have a secondary color, which in this case is going to be the Terminata stone that we were using earlier for uh, the, the cream colors on the shoulders. And then we're going to do a secondary edge highlight sort of in the center of this primary one that sort of mimics it, but is sort of contained within it. Mm -hmm. And so, sort of hard to see there. No, I think, uh, I think it's, it's okay. Not, I can do a zoom. The cover also, we'll see. coverage isn't great. There you go. Um, okay. I didn't wait till the brown dried. <laughs> okay. But you can sort of see yeah. uh, the, the theory of what we're going for is like a lighter, thinner line entirely within the thicker, fatter line. Okay. And so you're going to cover up most of the brown with the Terminata stone. Um, because, the, again, we really want to be cautious about not having these look like brown Templars. Um, but we want to, with our edge highlight, we want to have the, the it's predominantly a Terminata stone highlight. Okay. Like that's what we want. And but we want, when you look at it, you, you want it to sort of insinuate brown okay. because there's this brown on the, on the peripheries. It's almost got like a brown outline around right. the Terminata stone. Can I see our finish guy? Uh, yeah. Excuse me, folks. I wanted to just get a sense because um, maybe you also need to look at him too, or maybe you just remember, Brad, but... You know, I know that we do a lot of sort of selective edge yeah, lighting around here. Absolutely. That's, that's kind of a, a, a modern trend that we are into. Yeah. Um, where where painters say, I'm not going to edge highlight every single place yeah. ever all the time. Yep. Um, so I'm going to kind of take a look at this guy and see where you've gone. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's good. Um, I'm going to I'm going to finish up the. Do you want to zoom in on yourself while you're yeah. doing that? Um, I've got a little bit more. Uh, touch up work on this guy I'm going to do before I switch over to edge highlighting myself. Yeah, and the the brown actually is a little challenging in some ways because um, it's not it doesn't show up amazingly at first as yeah. you're putting it on. So Agreed. you have to kind of like you have to trust that it's there. You have to trust that it's there a little bit. Yeah. Okay, I like this one here, and and just a little. Thicker for the brown, yep. and you're right. This is adding a big, a big, I don't know, a big effect. It looks like, yeah. And if it's if you put too much on, it looks like it's brown. Right. Uh, but remember that we're going to go back over this with the Terminata stone. Right. And right. so a lot of that brown color is going to end up getting covered up. Okay. And so it will look much less brown when we're done than it does uh, after you first apply it because uh, you'll, you'll cover up a lot of that brown color. I like it. I, I really like the warmer look on the Dark Templar. Um, the Dark Templar? Oh, Black Templar. I knew I was going to do that. <laughs> uh, we te always tease Zach whenever he says Dark Templar. Did you ever play StarCraft? Okay. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't know that otherwise, right? Did you, um, did you play Protoss? I mean, I guess I played. I, I don't. I wasn't like a hardcore player. I think I played all of them. All of them. Okay. But I Pro Tools are probably my favorite. Yeah, me too. They were cool. Did you play StarCraft Two? Not really. I think I was in college, and yeah. pretty much, I played video games until like the beginning of my senior year in high school, and then um, one day I, uh, I had a PlayStation that I had bought with my own money. And then one day it fell and broke. And I was kind of like, you know what? I think I'm just like going to go hang out with girls for a while anyway. And then <laughs> then I got married. Never played again. And then I just did again. that and did a bunch of other things and kind of never got back into video games again. I was like, it seems to be like you, you can do one or the other. You can yeah. either like have a social life or, or do these. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to have a social life for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, You know, I'm not lying. Like I remember it falling. Yeah. I was playing this game called Chrono Trigger, which was oh, an RPG. It. Yeah. Um, uh, sequel to Chrono Cross, super popular Super Nintendo game. And I remember my PlayStation falling. I was very far in Chrono Trigger. And I remember being like, it was like maybe around this time of my 12th grade year. And what I used to do is um, I, I would get books on tape that I had to listen to for school. Um, so at this point, it was A Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway. And I, I would just play A Farewell to Arms for like, over and over again, like four or five times, like 
in some ways I was being responsible because when the person, the teacher was like, you need to re read A Farewell to Arms by this date, I'd be like, cool, I'm going to go get the book on tape right now, yep. and I'm going to listen to it like eight times, eight times, but yeah. only while I'm playing video games, because right. I don't actually want to listen to it at all. And so I was like, if eight times goes by, you know, maybe it was like more like five, five, six yeah. times, then I'll know. That's, that's incredible. Then I'll, then I'll be good at A Farewell to Arms. Yeah. Um, and it, it kind of worked, but I definitely remember Farewell to Arms, the PlayStation fell and smashed, and I definitely remember being like, I should be more upset about this, but I think I'm just going to like. I think I'm okay with it, yeah. I think I'm just going to call up some friends and like go hang out. <laughs> I was like, yeah, maybe, maybe this is a good thing. The rest was history. The rest was history. Um, so I don't know. I, 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 I like video games, but I don't think I played a game, any of the StarCraft games, forever. Um, do you want to, can you give me, do a shoulder zoom on me here? There you go. Um, so I'm going to start doing some edge highlighting. I've got brown paint on my brush here. And I don't actually water down the paint when I do edge highlights. Um, I just use the... Because weirdly, if you, if you water down the paint, it weirdly dries faster. Um, like unwatered down paint, like straight out of the bottle, dries, dries slower than, than watered down paint. Um, assuming you have the same volume. Um, so I'm not, I'm not watering any of this down. You couldn't do flow, or I'm sorry, not flow, flow improver. You can do uh, acrylic retarder, uh, which is also another great tool for edge highlighting. Um, because you have so little paint on your brush when you're doing this that, uh, the, the, the brush, the paint on your brush tends to, you have a very limited time window to, uh, mm, to get this done. And so adding a little bit of uh, uh, acrylic retarder to your, your paint in your wet palette can help a lot. Uh, but yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm just... I feel like the wet palette, honestly, I know you're talking about not wanting to add too much water, but I feel like the wet palette is like the first edge highlighting tool that yeah. I recommend. Because like, it just means that the paint doesn't dry out on your, while you're... On until you use well, it. Well, it's the it's about the right, it, but uh, yes, a hundred percent. And for me, I feel like it's it's more more specifically, it's like a little bit about the consistency being the same. And if there's one place where you want consistency to always be the same, I feel like it's kind of like edge highlighting. Yeah. Right? Um, but I'm I'm digging this um, very dark brown edge highlight. Um, yeah, I'm digging this look. I I, uh, I don't paint models that are this dark ever, so I would never <laughs> do this. Um, but I kind of I kind of like it. It's different. Yeah, I've never like I said I've never done it before either. Um, but I I really like the look of the sort of two stage edge highlight. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Ty. Foolishly, Ty says foolishly primed on a windy day and got dust in the primer on my models. Nightmare. Should I just go for a grimy scheme or strip? Oh Mix gosh. of resin and plastic. Oh, man. Uh, let me... Um, I almost... I almost am curious how, how bad that is. Um, because if it's not too bad, primed on a windy day. God. Um, how many models is it? That's my question. Yeah. Is I, it like... Is it like a squad? I would... I would uh, I would re redo those guys. Yeah. If, um, if we're talking about, you know, a thousand points of dudes. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking at your question here, Ty, and trying to think. Um, the, do you have black that you were using? Uh, here's the about okay. black. I, I'm not sure what to say. I think I m agree with Brett. Um, if, but if it was like 10 dudes, I, I might just strip them, start on something else while they sit in the, in, in the, in the whatever stripping method you use. Um, but, uh, yeah, I really don't know. I've not had that happen. I absolutely hate that look. That, like, bugs me to no end when I do it on my own models. Like, I, oh, man, um, I started priming with an airbrush pretty quickly, so I, it, it, it hasn't happened to me a ton, but the few times it has, I was just like, I hate my life. Why did this happen? I hate these models. Like, <laughs> get yeah. out of my sight. Not I was just good. like super down on it. Right. Um, 
And it took me a while to kind of get up the courage and motivation to like undo all the work I'd done and then and then start over again. But yeah, the it's because it's a texture, right? It's not even just the color. It's like the, the texture is mex messed up. So there's no way to fix it later. Right. Uh, Ty says there, it's 60 guard and there's one visible and there's some visible grit. Yeah, man. Uh, I mean, the problem that's is... That's a lot. Like, I, I'll just tell you probably what you don't want to hear. The problem is that that's going to be there and that's going to be there in every step of the process and everything you do. So yeah. when you go to put your paint on, when you dry, if you're doing any dry brush, edge highlighting, recess washing, everything, you're going to have to contend with this. Um, but look, here, here's the thing. Stripping is obnoxious, but it's it's also kind of... It's also kind of like a brain dead process, you know what I mean? It's not hard, yeah. It's, it's just time, time consuming. consuming. So, you know, you, you set yourself up. This was talking about setting up a system. You get your table out, you get your paper, your newspaper, you get your bucket, you pull things out, you put them on a paper towel, one's drying and you're, you're scrubbing or whatever you're doing, and you watch a movie. You watch two movies, three movies, and it's, yep. you know, you lost a day, you're back a day, but like you can, you can get through it. It's not, it's not something you can't do. Um, right. It's not something you can't also again w listen to a podcast or right. watch a movie while you're doing it. Or hang out, hang out with us. Yeah. Um, so it, it could be worse. Is that helpful? It could be worse. That that helps people feel better. Also, <laughs> um, you could have you could have you been further along. It, it could have further further along. It yeah. could have happened when you varnished. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that is how it could have wor been worse. Yeah. I'm sorry, Ty. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry too. My, yeah, my, rec my recommendation is also to strip and maybe consider getting an airbrush, if only for priming. It, uh, it's a big, it's a big, uh, when I first started airbrushing, I only used it for priming and I, I justified it purely based on that, just because the priming process was so much easier and faster and less mis prone to mistakes. Okay, so now we're doing really kind of careful thin chunks of the Terminata stone, right? Yep. Okay. Um, and it does look really nice over the brown. Thank you, Ethereum. Uh, thanks for the compliment on my Sylvanith Arch Revenant. I've just finished his wings. Now on to his bark and leaves, and he's about done. Well, yeah, it looks great. This is the, Brett, you were saying the, the model where you're like, look at those wings. Yeah, this, this, the wings are amazing. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So good. And um, I, I, the, it's a beautiful army, Sylvaneth. Honestly, it was sort of the army, uh, it, it was in the contention for one of the armies I really wanted to be kind of like my big AOS army. Yep. Because um, I don't really consider Beast Claw Raiders that role because they're just so niche. Um, and, 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 you know, it's a cool army and easy army to start. But it, it, it's not a real AOS experience, even when you and I do your first kind of game, or your, our practice game, yeah. that we got to get in here soon. Um, I don't think I'll play them against you because it's, it's a very bizarre experience. It's yeah. almost similar to, although I guess not quite. Like Imperial but, Knights or something. Yeah, kind of something like that. You know, it, it, so um, Sylvaneth were an army that I was like, oh, you know, wh what am I passionate about? What army do I really think is super cool? And, and um, they were... They were really one of them. Um, I was also just trying to to do an army that this studio didn't have. Right. Um, and Mel was working on on Sylvaneth, um, and then Brian has Seraphon, and so those were kind of the two. Those that, were the two that you really wanted to th do. Those were kind of the two that I really wanted to do, but and, so, and other people already had dibs. Yeah, which was okay um, because uh, Daughters is an army. You know, Dark Elves were my first army when I was a kid. Um, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and I, I've always thought they're they're pretty cool, um, so I, I was kind of happy to do them. And and you know, I had sort of just glossed over the line in okay. general because I was like, oh, I'm going to do Sylvaneth or Seraphon. Yeah. But once I start looking at them, um, I was like, oh, this is actually going to be really fun, and I can level up here with painting faces. Pa Seraphon and yeah, Sylvaneth. No faces, yeah. There's um, there's very little faces in Sylvaneth as well. It's mostly just trees. Tree spirits that yeah. have come to life. So. Um, so you're I, normally a good guys army. How did you initially get attracted to, to Dark Elves? Well, for, first of all, it is worth pointing out 
that in AOS, uh, Daughters of Cain are order. What? Yeah. Oh, no, but it's I didn't crazy. know that. I mean, what else would they be, right? Of the other four grand alliances, three grand alliances. They'd be like chaotic chaos? No, neutral. They hate chaos. Chaotic neutral. Oh, I see. Well, everyone has to be in one of these grand alliances. And it's order, destruction, and what's the other one? Death? Oh, death and chaos. Death and chaos. Yeah. I mean, they're not chaos in the sense that they, like, worship one of the chaos gods, but they're, like, chaotic in the sense that, like... Well, order, they're, they're like... They're not lawful. They like, they like, like, killing is, like, order, right? Like, it's, it brings order to... Does it, though? Well... Yeah, I guess it does. No, it doesn't. Well, they would suggest it's part of it's part of it. I mean, like for that reason, they would disagree the, with me. For that reason, in the AOS world, order uh, and like Nagash often ally, death often allies with order um, against chaos because like they all hate chaos and death is like kind of like the order bad guys. It's like order plus bad guys. You know what I mean? Because mm. death is like going to happen and mm. yeah. Anyway, um, I do normally play good guys. The Daughters of Cain are kind of like anti-heroes, which yeah. I also like. Um, so it's, it's fun. How's your... Uh, so you're, you've moved on from brown edge highlights to, to white, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm kind of like peeking in on your guy here Yep. to see how I'm doing and what I have left to do. I screwed one up that I'm going to have to touch up. But. Yeah, I actually find when I do edge highlights um, that I often, very often, I'll, I'll end up being a bit a bit ham-fisted with it, and it ends up sort of too bulky. Uh, and instead of just erasing the whole thing and and starting over with that particular highlight, you can actually fix it. Yeah, you I can get think. some black paint. And just make the line thinner yep. by like painting next to it, next to your line, and thinning thinning the the highlight a little bit. Uh, and I found that that actually it's easier. I do. It's easier. It's weirdly easier yeah. than the doing the highlight in the first place. Um. So it's a it, now in this case, will we use black or will, you, will we use the brown? I used black. Okay. And it means that you have a few areas where. You know, if you look close, it, it like it doesn't look quite right. But we use so little brown as a, as our base coat that it's it ends up breeding. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. So I have a couple to fix. I also am seeing like there's a place I tend to highlight on Space Marines that looks like you haven't, which is like or very little you did, and I need to tone mine down, which is like about right above their eyes. Oh, I, I did. Yeah. I, but we haven't painted the eyes yet. Not the eyes, but like the little crest. That's oh, the, the, their mohawk? The, the ridge. No, no, no. The, just the ridge, like, there. Oh, yeah, their eyebrows, yeah. So I did that, but um, I, I didn't want to do it yet because we haven't painted the eyes yet. You know, Don't you have to do oh, that until after you paint the eyes? I don't know. I, I don't. feel like my eye paint's going to cover that up on accident. Maybe, maybe I should. I don't know. We'll see. Um, hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right. I'm going to switch over to some uh, some Terminatus stone highlights now. Okay. We'll get a. We'll do. We a can zoom do a zoom, zoom here. here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm going to start with his knee. Uh, the knee here is, is kind of one of the more prominent edges. Again, I'm just going to, this is weirdly, uh, this is sort of more like, a, almost like a half dry brush. Um, like, I'm okay if the paint is sort of somewhat dry on the, on the brush here. And I'm just trying to pick up the edge. Like, I don't, I want it to be a super thin line. Uh, right in the center of where I applied the um, the brown. Now, one thing that is kind of interesting about this process, compared to how um, 
we paint armored stuff like this in other factions and other colors is that we've done no recess washing. That's right. So you actually do kind of get away with uh, skipping a step when you when you do black, it seems like. Yeah. And I think there's sort of different uh, approaches to edge highlighting. Some people will do, um, you know, in the extreme, they can be very bright and sort of border on cell shading. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think personally, I tend to gravitate towards more uh, uh, finely detailed edge highlights, more, more minimalistic edge highlights. Mm, uh, yeah. And I, it's a stylistic thing. I'm not, I, don't, I think the, the sort of very heavy edge highlights with multiple layers and um, maybe even some blending in the edge highlights, can, you know, that can look like, that can be a really compelling look. Um, it's just uh, not, not my preference for my models. So I'm doing these, they're pretty, uh, pretty fine. And I want it to, to read as, you know, I don't want you to look at it and say like, I, I want you to almost look at it and not be sure if it's an edge highlight or just the actual light in the room. Got it. You know, picking up, picking up the edge of the model. Mm -hmm. I like it. Um, I am finding, and, and <clears throat> I will say I love the, the method of, of cleaning up your edge highlights with the color that you're edge highlighting over, right? Um, yeah. I, I do that all the time with my Tau and my Eldar, and um, it, I don't know, it's almost like the actual part of the edge highlighting that really gives you the result. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, the edge highlighting itself is kind of like putting a color weirdly and a little uncomfortably where you're not supposed to be doing it. Yeah, you're applying it sort of in a bulk fashion, and then you're... Like, hope this looks good, and then... It almost <laughs> never does, and, and then, then you... You go back with the... With the touch er it up. Eraser, yeah. That's a, that's a good point. Yeah, it's like an eraser, exactly. Okay. All right. I think I'm. I think I'm ready for the next step. Okay. You want to do some, uh, some weathering. You want to do the yeah. the shade, or you could do the eyes. Oh, the eyes. Okay. Which are? So the eyes I did, or you can edge highlight the red. So why don't you do that? Okay. You go back to front view. Um, the, the. Weapons mm -hmm. um, get an agrax or sorry a null oil applied over them along with all the metallic the the, the metallics okay. and then um, we're gonna edge highlight the weapons with this orange color. Okay. Classic non oil. Yeah. Everyone needs a little null oil. In their yeah. Life. Okay. So I've got a little bit more on this guy. I'm going to do this kind of thing, folks, here. You can see as I'm doing it where I'm pushing the non-oil, I'm starting up at the top of this chain sword and going down towards where the action is. Yeah. So we get away from having big pulled up areas yeah. where um, there's just flat surfaces because we don't want that. It can be a nice... I mean, then it just looks dirty and grimy. But... Um, I don't know that we really want that to look too dirty and grimy. Like we don't want it to look like there's like puddles of oil. So you can see I start at the top and just like pull it all the way down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Chain swords are like perfect for that too. Yeah, and it allows one of the things I like about the chain sword. Like I was kind of sloppy with how I applied the metallic color to the blades, and it like it kind of spilled over onto the red a little bit. But like because you're applying this null oil step. And it's going to puddle in the, the recess, which is sort of the join between the metallic and the red anyway. Um, you're just, the null and null is going to cover up that, that, that slop a little bit. So here on the gun, I'm going to also move into the silver. I'm going to move towards the hand. There's, you, you take your uh, shortcuts where you can find them, and here, or your help, right? Here we have this nice help in that I'm pushing non oil towards a black hand. So I'm just gonna hide it. So you actually, this is a great sword, a great arm, a great hand to apply non-oil to and pull it towards the armored hand of the Space Marine because the non-oil, I mean, as long as you're not pulling huge amounts, right? Yeah. Like, 
But if you're if you've got like a normal amount and you're pulling it towards his his black armored hand, um, it's gonna hide it, which is sort yeah. of what you want. If you've got a little bit extra, exactly. And you can also pull it off. I find if I've got too much puddling, you can just sort of clean off your brush. Yeah. And then use your brush to kind of soak up the extra if you need exactly. to. Exactly. If the brush is dry. If the brush is dry. Yeah. yeah exactly. Okay, that was easy. I'm gonna hit this purity seal a little bit too. All right, and now that's drying. What do I do while that's drying? Um, you can put null oil on the base as well. On this base? Yeah. All over here? Yep, all okay. over the whole base. I'm gonna check in on you, Brett, here. Oh yeah, you stop leaning in. All right, so I'm just doing the last couple bits of edge highlighting on the shoulder pads. Uh, so I've just got a little bit here uh, that I'm doing. Now, Brett, what about you? How are you gonna, are you gonna try level up this, this upcoming year? Yeah, so um, I'm really trying with air, airbrushing right now. That's like sort of a technique that I'm trying to do more of in order to, um, to get better at and to feel more comfortable with. Um, I, that was kind of my this past year thing and I'm gonna continue that. Um, I've basically only ever painted <laughs> Tau and Wood Elves. Uh, and so like just trying to understand what it takes to paint Space Marines and uh, um, these Fire Slayers is something that I'm excited for. and. Uh, I think flesh on the on the fire slayers will be tricky. Can I see the, uh, the word bears red? Yeah, I'm gonna do the eyeballs. Yeah, flesh is uh, is fun, honestly. I mean, that's something you know. We, we've we've done flesh. Yeah. We've airbrushed. I, I think flesh actually is, you know, it's it's we we say like some some of the things like bark and. And stone benefit from not airbrushing more, yeah, um, because they have these natural looks. But I actually think you get really good looks with skin with airbrushing because yeah. of how thin you can put layer after layer on. Yep, you know, so you can kind of start with red and, or browns and build up, and yeah, and um, you can get different color variations yeah. really easily, and you can transitions really smoothly. Uh, so I think I think skin's a good one for. You know, and it's it's not like I've, up to this point I've just been using um, airbrush for like vehicles, large flat surfaces. Right. And so this will be like you know on on individual infantry size models. That's like that's not that's very different. <laughs> it's something I'm gonna have to grow into a little bit. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I decided I'm not gonna do the eyes just yet. Okay. Instead, what I am going to do is the, the, the weathering. I'm going to do the um, our, our sepia shade on the metallics. Oh, okay. So I am doing the orange highlight here now. Mm -hmm. Okay, on the, on, the, on the reds, you're saying? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and these... Uh, at first, I was a little worried that this orange... Uh, would be too bright on the on the red mm -hmm. as a as a highlight color, but it actually I'm I'm super pleased with how it came out. All right. Well, you're you're doing it very subtly, right? So. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Can you go ahead and zoom in on me? So yeah. Real quick. I'm gonna um, I'm I'm doing the same process you just did. No oil on the weapon, um, and I'm being pretty liberal with it. Uh, I'm trying to get it down into these recesses. I'm, this is doing two things. Uh, I'm I'm trying to pick out the details, get the no oil down into the recesses for a little bit of added detail, uh, and and uh, sort of make the uh, the panel lines. This is a panel lining step, but like you know, done in bulk with bulk paint application instead of sort of individual. Uh, but I'm also trying to dull down the metallic color and the red color. So um, 
I want the red to be a little bit darker. I want the silver color of the weapons to be a little bit darker. And this is, and this is achieving that at the I, same time as we're getting our recess washing. I like the idea of knowing what it is you're trying to do while you're doing the step. Yep. Um, and even if it's two things and just being, you know, just being aware of it, like um, awareness, I don't know. It helps you actually do that step. Yeah, and I think, you know, one of the reasons we, we uh, use Mephiston Red for these weapons, it's a pretty bright red, um, is because we knew that, like, uh, we were going to come back and dull it down. So, whereas normally we might say, oh, Word Bears Red, that's sort of more the color we want for these weapons. Um, but if we, we know that we're going to come back and, and dull it down, then maybe we don't want to do, you know, maybe, maybe we want Mephiston Red instead. Okay. Um, so what's the next step? I'm excited to add the... Yeah, let's do the CPU wash. The wash, yeah. Yep, that is the next step. So... Um, Oh, we didn't do his eyes yet, but we do that after. Yeah, yeah, and I think we might skip the eyes just in the interest of time. Okay. Um, do you have metallic on your down here? On your uh, on your no. pistol? No. Let's do holster? that. No. Yeah, put some metallic there, and then um, and then because that that'll get that'll get a uh, uh, sepia wash applied as well. Got it. Oh yeah, I see. All right, so we'll go ahead and, oh, I got a little bit of black here I need to clean up. There's also like a little uh, buckle on the harness. The on the, Abaddon black. Yeah, uh, the belt buckle? Yeah, uh, no, the, like there's a little buckle on the harness. Oh, the, I, didn't, I didn't paint that. Okay. Well, this, guy, if you want. this guy's a special issue. He's got a special issue. Roster. Belt buckle. Like, Whoa, what's up with the metal tab on your... Dang, how do I get one of those? How do I get that? I lost it now. Oh, there it is, right there. Yeah, I gotta say this is a pretty easy uh, process. Um, it's time consuming. It's I, uh, it's a lot of brush work. Yeah, I guess so. Um, but nothing here is. I guess the edge highlighting is probably the hardest piece of this. All right, let's well, do that's a pretty normal, let's do right? a sepia wash. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see where this guy looks without the sepia wash. He also doesn't have his eyes, and he also doesn't have. Um, yeah, do you want to the decals? Shall we, shall we put our two? Yeah, and we'll put we we took Kevin's off for 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 the time being, and we've got um, the the ones that Brett the ones that Brett and I are working on here, so you guys can see uh, no decal, and uh, decals quite frankly add a lot. We probably won't do that on stream. We've done decals before, and we'll do decals again. So if you're feeling decal neglect, yeah, hang in there. We'll get back to it, but. You can see uh, what we're about to do adds a lot of character to it. I mean, if you just stopped where we're at right now and did um, the decals, it'd be okay. I think. Yeah. But I, I don't know. It looks. Uh, yeah, like, I think once we get through the sepia wash on the on the white, I think that that would be true. Um, yeah, the the shoulder pads would have needed if we weren't going to do what we're about to do. The shoulder right. pads would have needed a little more. Needed a little more something. Needed a little more love. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this will be. This 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 will be fun. Okay, so this is a Vallejo uh, CPO wash. Which I've not use, used before. You can use Agrax or Earthshade as well. Or or Seraphin Sepia. Seraphin Sepia. It's a little more yellow. Sure. I think, yeah. yeah. Um, I think actually this would be a great application for a um, uh, an oil wash. Oh, okay. Um, I've never I've used oil washes for panel lining. Yeah. Uh, and I've never, and so I've never done that for something like this. Um, but I think this would be a great application for it. So the way I do this is I start by just getting the part wet. So I want it, I want the the wash to settle in the in the corners. I'm gonna sort of paint like just water onto this part. Of you do the, both shoulder pads or just one at a time? Pad, just one at a time. And then with a very wet brush, uh, I dip my brush into the puddle of, of paint on the palette. Now, sorry, did you do the corners or all around the rims? Uh, just the corner, just sort of a large swath of the corner. Okay. And then I just kind of touch my brush into the puddle of water that's now on uh, on the shoulder pad. And, and then you can just sort of add more water and move this around until you sort of get the look that you're looking for. And I, you know, we wanted to sort of settle more into the corners than, 
in the rest, but it's good if we can get a little bit sort of trending towards the center as well. Um, and then once we're sort of happy with that, uh, we can start to uh, add a little bit more water and spread it over into other parts of the shoulder pad. Do, do, do. But you're using like the water to more or less transport the wash. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You can kind of move the the ink, the the color around the surface um, by how you how you add water and where you add water, and then how you kind of sweep it around with your brush a little bit. So this is I think this is a great start. Um, uh, we've got oh. You know, so this is part of the problem is gravity will pull it towards the other side of the... Because <laughs> oh, we've I got see. too much water. So I've got a little bit on each side now, so I'm going to hold it like that until it dries. Um, so while it's doing that on the shoulder pad and while it's drying, I'm just going to apply the, the full strength, full strength wash to the metallics. So uh, this is sort of a different technique, a different goal here. We're not trying to make it look sort of sepia in the corners. We're not applying a vignette. We're just applying this wash over the entire uh, area of metallics. And we're going to do this basically everywhere that's not, uh, everywhere that's silver. And so because we've already applied Nuln Oil to the silver that's on the, on the gun and the chain sword, the, those two areas will get sort of two different will have end up in the final product having two different washes applied. They'll first have had null oil, and then we'll have had um, the sepia wash applied. I think the Citadel equivalent after working with this now, which I have not worked with before, would be uh, seraphim sepia. Okay. Yeah, how do you feel that this compares to the Citadel equivalent? Is it different? Is it similar? It feels pretty similar. I'm not sure I would. I did maybe it's a little thicker. Yeah, I think it is pretty thick actually, um, and I find that I have to dilute it quite a bit. Um, but you'll see when you get to the the step where you're just applying it to the the metallic that having it be a little thicker is actually kind of nice because um, you can always dilute it. Um, right, easier easier to. To go down than to go up, right? Yep. And, uh, and I found that I tried Vallejo's uh, sort of black ink, their, you know, null oil equivalent. Yeah. And I didn't like it. Isn't it like kind of bluey, bluish or something? It was more the texture, the sort of flow properties that I didn't like. Oh, I see. Um, and it might have to do with what you just described, you know, being too thick or, or whatever. Um, and now, so I'm keeping an eye as I'm doing this other work on how the shoulder pad is drying. You can see you can get some water marks pile, pool, pooling up here. And this is where I think having an oil-based wash would make this, make this a little bit sort of smoother of a, of a process. But I'll go back and if I see it sort of drying in a way that I'm not happy with, I can touch it up with some brushwork as it's drying almost and just feather that, that drying line a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because um, you don't want to have you don't want to have drying. It's lines actually fun. There. It's actually kind of fun to work with. Now I will say, because uh, oil wash is something that gets brought up a lot, both by us and by uh, viewers. And I will say, folks, that we are going to be doing some oil wash stuff in the new year in January. And not surprisingly, uh, you'll be able to see us working on that as we work on our Nurgle terrain battle pack. And we're going to be doing a bunch of stuff with. Um, yeah, with oil washes, which is a process I've done Fun not a stuff. lot. Yeah, so it's another kind of way. I guess I'm, we're we're all kind of trying to level up a little bit around here, because um, it's it's new to all of us. And I've not really painted Nurgle stuff too much. The most Nurgly thing I painted was probably that pumpkin last week. To, to be honest <laughs> with you. Oh man, that was so much fun pumpkin painting. Although I will say I was very surprised how quickly they rotted. I was like, oh, oh my gosh! Uh, I was like, oh, they're not outdoors. They're not going to be in the sunlight. It's not going to be this. It's not. They rotted that. immediately. It was like forty-eight hours, and they were just like mold coming out of the mouth. It was so gross. Yeah, it was bad. Your Nurgle pumpkin was very fitting. Well, uh, the Nurgle pumpkin actually uh, weirdly also held up the best. 
Yeah. I don't know if it was because of the species of pumpkin it was or, or the type, I guess, is the word I should have used there. But um, the, the Nurgle pumpkin ha- held up fine. The demo pumpkin, the, the one that we did with the, the Titans. The Titans logo, yeah. The Titan symbol. It, it was, was like moldy instantly. It was, um, we, we streamed a game Thursday night with it um, in the background. So if you watch that game, I, I can't even, I know I produced it, but I can't remember who was on it. It was, it was the Thursday before Halloween, so last Thursday. Yeah, it was, uh, it was um, zombies versus vampires. Right, right, right. Blood right. angels versus necrons. Right, so if you, if you watch that game, you'll, you'll see it in the background, and it looked totally fine. The next day, literally the next morning, literally the next morning, Adrian and I were in here, and you were in here too. And the yeah. Titans logo was was visibly basically green, <laughs> uh, black green, yep. from from the I- inside, right? Like, um, so no surprise, we opened it up, and it was like a it was like a it wispy was, world of black mold in there. Yeah, it was a science project. Now here's where things get interesting for the science project. We. We, by we, I mean, I guess me, Adrian, and Brett, uh, elected then, as we were working in the studio, not to go ahead and throw that out. Um, Wait, I thought we threw it out. Well, we did. Well, you left. Yeah. And then Adrian and I were here kind of all day Friday, and, and you, you had left, and then um, while you were gone, it, it started, Adrian heard like a dripping sound. Oh, God. And it started to drip water and we went over and it was it literally was just shedding water it looked like it was sweating uh so then we realized we had to throw it away and so when i went to grab it it like kind of collapsed in my hands and water <laughs> came out all over the place oh no and it was really here's the weird part though it really was water like it really was just water yeah it wasn't gross it didn't smell or anything um there was some smells happening but like it the water from that got my hand and stuff we put it in a we put it in a bag and we um, we threw it out, uh, and and at that point we made the call to go ahead and get rid of the other ones too. So Saturday's Age of Sigmar Probably game. for the best. Yeah, Saturday's Age of Sigmar game between me and Adrian uh, featured less decorations, less pumpkinage, less yeah. pumpkins, unfortunately. Yeah. So I'm going ahead and adding a sepia wash to the the emblem on the chest as well. Um, and I'm gonna do this pretty heavily. I, I basically want this to be darker than the shoulder pads. Um, and you can do add sort of mix in a little bit of null oil at the same time. And so I'm, I'm basically gonna apply the sepia wash to the entire uh, emblem. And then I'm gonna use, selectively apply the null oil just sort of at the base of the of the each feather row while it's wet still. Yeah. Okay. Let me get a little bit of that known oil, please, Brett. Obviously, that's okay, there you go. not a great time to ask you to do that, but. Um, yeah, and then uh, maybe a little bit in the eye sockets of the skull. And that guy's good. Okay. Um, and I think the last thing we'll do is um, uh, an edge highlight on the leather pouches. Now, one thing I would just say, I'm noticing that our shoulder pads yeah. look a little less intense than the one, than the yeah. sample one. Yeah. Is that because we, we need to keep adding layers? You could we keep could. Adding. Yeah, I think, you know, this is a very hard thing to undo, to go back on. Mm-hmm. Uh, similar, you know, we're talking about um, uh, air, or, uh, rattle can primer earlier. Like, if you do too much of this, like you're stuck doing another five, like to start over, you have to do five coats of uh, <laughs> Terminata stone to, to, to cover over that, you know, over application of sepia wash. So I really don't want to put too much on. I'd rather put on one coat, let it dry, you know, and then sort of make an assessment of how that dried and how it came out before committing to putting on a second. Got it. Heavier layer. That makes sense. Wash. I'm pretty happy with uh, with this technique, though. I, I like the look. Um, what are we doing now, Brett? So the um, uh, the leather pouches need a bit of edge highlight. I've got this color called orange brown from Vale from Vallejo that we're going to do a first edge highlight on, okay. and then this color desert stone that we're going to do a second oh, second layer on, sure, similar sure. to how we did the two layered edge highlights on the on the model on the armor. Got it. And we're just going to pick up 
again, like there's, no, we're not going to do the whole every edge. We're just going to sort of selectively find some that um, that makes sense. And this orange brown color, it's it's going to add a little bit of a, a different look, a little bit of a different color. It's not just going to be lighter brown version of that brown. It's going to give us a little bit of color variation. Almost to, you know how like the inside of leather is a different color than the, than the surface? It's almost like where this is folded or creased and, or, or cut, you're seeing sort of like the inside of that piece of leather and like what, what, what different color does that look like? Oh, okay, I'm imagining it looks a little more orangey uh, than, than the tanned surface. Got it. So I'm just going to do a few edges with, with this guy. And again, the first layer is a little thicker. The edge highlights a little, a little thicker. And then the second layer that we'll do will be a little finer. Okay, so I've done that, uh, that thick layer with the orange brown. I'm going to do a thinner layer with desert stone. Here. And this color, it's pretty similar to Terminatus Stone. Um, I almost actually even just just use Terminatus Stone, but um, a little darker. It's a little darker. Um, and I'm gonna for this layer again, uh, because I want it to be really fine. I'm gonna get most of the paint off my brush, get it nice and dry and just try to pick up the edge, almost like a very selective dry brush. And I'm gonna to try to get right in the center of where I had that orange brown applied. There we go. And then he's got a pouch on his front. And this actually, um, I'm going to sort of almost dry brush even areas that I didn't highlight with the with the orange brown just to try to pick up some of the, the some of the detail that maybe has gotten lost. Oh, should I step you wash the purity seal? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, I don't have one on this guy. Uh, but yes, that's great. Oh, I missed a little bit with the null oil on his gun. I'll borrow that from you. This is, this is, you can see this on the gun here. There's like a little spot where the null nail got missed. And so it just this like sort of bright red spot right in the middle of the. Oh yeah. And those really jump out at me. So fix that just a little bit of. Man, I will say, uh, I, I love this technique we did here. Okay. On the shoulder pads. I am having on one of them that I'm having like the water running into the gravity thing yeah. happen. But of course, to some extent, that's okay. That's kind of what you want, yeah. To some extent, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, All right. interesting. So, how are we doing on time, Zach? Uh, we are, we are, let's see, we're about 2.15. 2 okay. Yeah, why don't we call it there? Okay. We haven't, so things... Things we haven't done yet. Yeah, let's talk about it. Um, I'll, I'll keep it zoomed in on you here. And, we and here's the. Oh, here's yeah, here's our uh, our demo model. Yeah. So we haven't we haven't finished the basing yet, um, and we haven't done the decal on the shoulder pad, and. Um, and that's, well, well, yeah, that's and kind so, of about it. Yeah, pretty much in the eyes. And right? the eyes. We have now, the eyes. With with the base, I will say this. It was just chatting with Brett about this earlier. Um, it, it's very likely that we will cover Brett's basing technique here um, in the coming months because we 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 are starting a numerous armies here. Um, I'm I'm starting at least I'm starting one. Um, you're starting these guys and the fire slayers. Um, I'm probably gonna um, <clears throat> snag uh, me my, my wife Megan, who's in Meg, who's in Chad, yeah. is starting one. So we are due for another basing episode for sure, yeah. where we kind of show some new techniques and and some different things um, that we didn't show in our last basing yeah. stream. Um, and I, in fact, in fact, I, I imagine we'll do a basing stream every now and then just to 
Yeah, so I, catch up. all of my models that I do across multiple armies are based this exact same way. I apply two different uh, technical paints, the crackle paint and the texture paint, and then I paint brown over them. I put null oil to get into the cracks of the crackle paint, and then I dry brush over that. So that's the entire process. Right. All of my models have, like, there's no rocks on the bases, there's no tufts of grass, nothing. Everything's just like crackle paint and texture paint, painted, washed, and then dry brushed. Yeah. And so what I want to do now that I've sort of, and, and the, my idea is that if I have a Space Marine army and a Tau army, I often will loan one army to like someone who's just learning the game. Yeah. And I want them to be based the same because like then they look cool like I fighting see. against each other. But I'm at the point now where this basing, very basic basing scheme is no longer doing it for me. Mm. And so I want to take this up a notch by adding little bits of rocks, you know, some larger rocks. Tufts some are tufts, gonna, yeah. tufts are going to do a lot for this, I think. Um, We're, we've really gone into the around here. Uh, Kat showed it, and then we I've added it to my Beast Claw Raiders, and we added it actually to the Gur board Adrian and I just made uh, yeah. the the tall right kind of reed grass. Re, re, yeah. grass. Yeah. So so we want to do another basing episode coming up where we. Um, well, I will specifically want to focus on, hey, I've done, you know, the idea that like, hey, I've done all my bases to like a uh, first tabletop level. Yeah. What are some things I can do to take those existing bases and yeah. like level them up a little bit? Definitely. Well, should we put these guys on glam cam? Yeah, let's do it. And at least kind of see where they're at. We can put all three and uh, folks can see. Let's hit this the guy here. Folks can see. Um, Finished product as it were. Make sure we've got some focus here. Focus. Is it focusing? It's there thinking we, about there it. There we go. It's thinking about it. All right. Okay. Great. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, I actually ended up, as you guys can see, this guy coming around the front here. I noticed I got a little bit of watermark on my right shoulder, but I'm not too worried about because I think a decal is going to hide a lot of that. Yeah. And, and I think in... I think you actually should probably do the decal first before doing this, this yeah. CPU wash. Um, and and uh, we'll we'll touch it up afterwards. But uh, I think if we if we were doing this all in one go, we'd probably do the the decals first before the the weathering on the shoulders. But I, I take this look. I, I love the warm look for the for the black Templar over the blue. I I don't know. The blue's cool. A lot of people are doing it right now. For me um, and you, I I don't know. It's not my favorite. Yeah, I I like the blue a lot. Um, but this is this is an interesting take on it. Yeah. And. Um, I'm excited to see, you know, maybe my opinion will change after we do more than <laughs> a handful of test models. Seeing it, yeah. like, it's one thing to see it on a model mm -hmm. in isolation, but to see it on a whole unit or a whole army, oh, um, well, it, has I mean, a, it has a different... You're starting to see it here. I think, I it, I think it looks yeah. great. I, yeah. I actually think adding more makes it look... I don't There's something kind of comic booky about it in a way that's like... Oh, that's... You're not, not, you're, the, you're not wrong. Like a graphic... Yeah. I should say graphic novel. Like... Not not in kind of like the traditional bright look of one, but in a more gritty kind of yeah. look of a, of a so something about I, it. I agree. Makes that, me feel that way I about like, them. I like that vibe. Anyway, um, I'm excited to keep painting these guys. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I feel reinvigorated with this new paint scheme, um, and yeah, I'm cool. really looking forward to. Uh, putting some time into these guys, getting this first squad of intercessors finished up, and then start applying the scheme to the more elaborate models. I'm looking models like forward to seeing it on a, on a Dread. Terminator's Dreadnought. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah especially yep. It'll look good on the a Redemptor. Yep. Right, yeah. It's going to look great on a Redemptor. Um, uh, great. Yeah, so we did it. We did it. Uh, let's chat about what's coming up. What's coming up, yeah. So um, we do have a couple videos coming out soon. Keep yeah. an eye out on those. Adrian is 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 on one of them, and he is now in Gibraltar. Right. Um, so we that should be coming out That's sometime soon. That's about the the board. The, the make, board. The making yeah. of the Gur board. Yeah, that we made. And if you if you haven't seen it, um, because you're you're a, a hobby titans folk, but not as much a, a into the gaming, do go check out the game that Adrian and I played on Tabletop Titans on Saturday. You can see the board. Yeah. Um, or at very least, you can see the trailer those guys did for the board. Yeah. Um, and, and get a sense of what that board looks like. It was a cool project. Yeah. Um, Next week, we are going to be having Cat back, um, and we're going to be yes. doing something kind of fun. Back by popular demand. Back by popular demand. We're going to be doing something kind of fun. 
she's going to be going through with me the process of how I paint my Sim Han. Yep. Um, I've got a Wraith Lord for me, I've got a Wraith Lord for her. We're each going to do a Wraith Lord together on stream. And what we're going to be looking for, really, I'm going to be looking for, is so I'm going to be asking her along the way. She's already watched the, the video where we paint my Sim Han Hornets. Yeah. So she's kind of learning what could I do to level up along right. the way. And, and then we're going to chat before stream and we'll have maybe some steps that I previously didn't take that we yep. might add yeah. to, to my Wraith Lords. Yeah. Zach's um, going to be the, 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 the learner. I'm gonna I'm gonna be I'm gonna be the learner again yes, second week again. in a row yeah, yeah. so um, I'm I'm looking forward to that because hey look it helps me level up my yeah. my painting which is something I super want to do so yep um, that's so, great it'll be fun yeah um, and we have a lot of we we, we we'll just stop there but we've scheduled a, the rest of the year out almost and some exciting stuff yeah yeah lot, lots coming uh, we are really excited to bring you guys some new content and uh, and. Have <laughs> have this all planned out, so we're hope, we're we're excited to to get some of this wrapped up and, and show you guys what we we've been working on, like this uh, you know gold Aries back here. Yeah, like that thing, <laughs> which will uh, be showing up. Oh gosh. Okay, thank you, Megan. Top five '90s MTV shows before we go. Top five '90s MTV. Do you even know? No, no offense, but you sometimes don't know a lot of pop culture. I, wasn't Real World an MTV show? It was. Is that one yeah. of your top five? I don't know. I never watched it. Um, road Rules? Road, road Rules. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, well, MTV, actually. 90s MTV, like, originated the reality show. Like, that was where reality shows uh, were I born, think that's true. Right? For me, um, Megan, I don't know that I can answer too many. Ren and Stimpy technically was on MTV for a while. Um, and I do love Ren Stimpy. Uh, Daria's fine. I will say this about Daria. I'm going to make some enemies here, I know. But we went back and kind of tried to watch a little bit of Daria recently. It doesn't hold up quite as well as I thought. It really leans into, like, these high school cliches, which are very outdated. And you're just kind of like, okay, there's the, the smart but frustrating girl. There's the cheerleader. There's the jock. And you're kind of like, it's enough. Um, it was was uh, Beavis and Butthead on MTV? Beavis and Butthead was. Yeah. What about In Living Color? Was that on MTV? In Living Color, I think, was MTV. I don't remember. Yeah, In Living Color was good. Um, I will say that, I yeah, Daria a little too much. There's another one that, I don't know that Beavis and Butthead held up quite that well either. Yeah, so Beavis and Butthead for me is in the same category as... Um, um, Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Yeah, I, it's not my brand of humor. I it's just think. like it's a, it's a crazy and it kind of kind of. I just feel bad. They like they like make fun of characters and I just feel bad for them. I'm like, yeah. Oh, me what? I like I feel bad for you. Why why are they make why is Master Shake such a mean person? Oh, uh, like it's not the end in Chad mentions Ian Flux and that show was pretty cool also. Oh, yeah. um, and there's Caldor. Thank you, Caldor, so much. Ian Flux and the Young Ones. I don't remember mm. the Young Ones. Eon Flux was cool. My brother watched it. He was five years older than me, and I remember kind of being like, ooh, what is this? But then yeah. I think it was kind of like it was kind of like a dog chasing a car. Like yeah. once I finally got to like, oh, I'm going to watch Eon Flux. Uh, I can watch it on my own now. And I watched it. I was like, this is, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, it's fine. Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I don't know that I... Love a lot of '90s MTV. Yeah, you shows. know what's weird is like we didn't we didn't have MTV when I was at our house when okay. I was growing up in the '90s, um, and so I had to like go over to other people's houses to watch MTV, which mm. was like, so I, I I've seen like single episodes of a lot of these shows, yeah. but not enough to like really get into it. You know, yeah, if that makes sense. Um, '90s MTV shows. Jeez. Okay. Well, anyway. Well, thanks, guys. Yeah, I thank you so much. <laughs> I, I think we did it. Yeah, we did it. Um, thanks for sticking with us. Thanks for sticking and with us. And we'll, we'll see you guys next week. Yeah. Same time, same channel. See you guys. Okay, bye.